Welcome to Friday. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew and welcome to the Stellathon. We're going to be in your face for 12 hours playing games, doing call-ins, doing auctions. That's right. Doing if some... you keep your screen tuned to this station. That's right. And you better. No You're flipping. here now. Who's, who's <laughs> going to make it all the way to Don't 12? Don't be a quitter. <laughs> That noise outside. I thought it was music at first. Yeah, yeah this is... somebody knocking over some garbage cans outside. Um, so this is the Stellathon, and we're going to be raising some money for Stella, which is the emulator for Atari 2600. And I want to tell you a little quick backstory why I'm doing this, why we're doing this here. Um, a couple months ago, I thought, oh, I think I'm going to donate to Stella um, because I use it a lot for the show for testing and getting things ready. And um, so I donated some money to them, and they put you on a list of other donators that have donated money. And I looked at the list, and it was not long enough for how long this program has been around. For decades, this program's been around. And I thought, well, that's not right. So many people use this for developing, um, for just playing games, um, for testing. Uh, it's really, really unbelievably useful for the community that everybody is in, that is part of, you're watching this, you're definitely part of the Atari 2600 community. People don't randomly stumble across yeah, this kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, let's, let's get some money raised for them because they need money to set aside time to work on Stella. They need equipment to make sure that the emulation is frame accurate, correct, yeah. cycle accurate, everything absolutely correct so that Homebrews can be developed uh, well on Stella so that it acts exactly the same in the emulator as it does on real hardware. So that when they take it over to real hardware, they just turn it on and it's going to be and running works. perfectly. Yep. And so they don't, you know, makes it a lot easier for them. So it is a very excellent piece of software, Splendid Not. Dare I say the best emulator available? Well, definitely the best emulator for the 2600. Let's not uh, make it's assumptions always about dicey other ones. to use words like best because all of a sudden, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a really great it's one. It's incredible. And I love it. It's, it's useful. definitely my favorite, and it's the one I use the most. Oh my god, my my tablet is going crazy because the eBay auctions have started already at noon exactly when this show started. All the eBay um, items, all the auction items that are also raising money for Stella, went live, and every time there's a bid. It, that's kind of cool, actually. That's it, really it nice. It vibrates this, so I can awesome. keep track of it. Um, and I got a whole... They, they're going crazy. <laughs> it's just a big list going nuts. Um, so they all start at 99 cents, which, why not? Make it low. Yeah. Make it fun. Yeah. Um, and there's things. There's 12 items. And we'll be going through them later. Um, but first, I want to welcome everybody to Zero Page Homebrew, <clears throat> where we play new games on classic consoles at 60 frames a second. So make sure you're watching at 60 frames a second or you're missing half the show. And I want to welcome all the people in the chat. Uh, Spiceware, S. Ramirez, Splendid Nut, R.J. Edwards, S. Ramirez 2008, Carl Nathan D. Strum, Scum Software, Stephen A. Tiki Dan 666, K. Dan AVC, uh, Carl G., Jal Bahalika, that's a new name. Yeah, Lem that's cool. Lem C. Callister, that's a new name as well. Tons RJ of Edwards, Dinoid, oh Pac Man Rap Fiji. Red. Oh my god, so many names. It's great. Red. <clears throat> yeah, it's great. And Trey Guy got in at the last second as Ramirez <laughs> 2008. And I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers as well. Charles and Check, Gredams, Ground Trooper, Johnny WC23, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, RC7E, Retro Happy Hour, Scum Software who just subscribed today. Yeah, Thank dude. you very much, Scum Software, whose game we played yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, we, we got to talk about that, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. Um, Sir Catleg, Sound Wizard, Spiceware, S. Ramirez 2008, and Tiki Dan K. And you can support the show as well if you uh, link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime and click subscribe. And you can do it for free, which makes it great. So we're going to be broadcasting for 12 hours. It's the longest show we've ever done. Um, and I'm, I guarantee you the camera's going to overheat and we'll have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, because there's like no camera that's designed to record for 12 straight. hours straight. Yeah. Um, unless... We are using Erlen's camera today. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's unless it's a webcam, which is very low heat. We that's may right. switch to that. We have two cameras as backup. 
we are prepared. So we'll be fine. You, know, you might notice that we're on a different lens as yeah, well. It's is... very wide. It's very strange. Um, but yes, let me post in, before we get too far, the link for the eBay auction items yeah, in the call. chat. So there. Thanks, I suppose. Thank you for the reminding. Uh, there's the direct link, and it lists all 12 items. And you can check them out. Some amazing items. We will get to that. And I also want to post in the fundraising website as well, um, where you can make uh, donations directly, and we'll read your name out. You want to send us a challenge of a game to play, or maybe later we'll take some call-ins from people who have donated as well. But we have some scheduled call-ins. We have Ooh. six so far scheduled hey, call-ins. Welcome, Impaler. Welcome, Ice Posta. Welcome... Oh, I already said their name. Um, Don't say it twice! So they'll explode! That's right. Oh, wait, if you or say it a third times, time, then they'll just suddenly appear. Yeah. Right, in, uh, right in the there's studio. There's no room. <laughs> there is no room. And somehow Tanya's going to fit in here at six. <laughs> we'll, we'll which I can't wait. In. We'll squeeze <laughs> her in. Um, so, the schedule for the call-ins, and these are all superstars we've got, of the 2600 homebrew scene. There's people screaming outside. Yeah, well, it's an exciting I don't think day. Can hear it's that. a nice day outside. Um, at 1 p.m., we have Thomas Jens calling in. Uh, 2 p.m. we have John Champo from um, Champ the, Games. The champion. The champion. heart of a champion. At 3 p.m. we have Daryl Spice Jr. These are all Pacific times, so if you're on the East Coast, add three hours. Yeah. Um, at 4 p.m. we have Dan Kitchen. Uh, 5 p.m. we have Stephen Anthony, who is the uh, maintainer of Stella, um, who, who we're doing all this for. Uh, at 6 p.m., we might have Albert Yerusso, who runs Atari Age. Maybe, maybe, if he is, he had plans, he's got schedules, um... He's a busy man. He is a busy man. He, he has, he has your homebrew to package up and That's sell correct. to you, and he's getting ready for Portland Retro Gaming Expo coming up in a couple months as well. 7 p.m., we have, uh, Nathan Strum. And, uh, and then maybe we'll take some more callers if uh, people uh, want to call in after that. And we have lots of games that we're going to be playing. Uh, that we're going to be challenging ourselves for high scores. We're going to be, I'm going to be trying to reclaim some world records that have been stolen from me. That's, that's how by it the, works, though. By the same guy. The same <laughs> guy stole two of my world records. One troll, so man. So today I reclaim them, I hope. We'll see. <laughs> they'll be, they'll needs, be challenging. Yeah. I don't need someone nipping at your heels. Yeah, and today we're going to be playing Mappy, uh, which is the first, second game uh, that we'll be playing uh, for the Homebrew Tournament Round 4. Um, because on Sunday, that's when it closes, so there's some pretty big scores there, including Nathan Strum, who's got Ooh. the top score. That doesn't surprise me. Well, he I was don't... the beta tester for it, and he did all the graphics for it and the box art for it. He has a bit of an advantage, but... Uh... Well, the beta testing would give him an advantage. Those other things wouldn't. <laughs> no, just, just, just to box be clear, art, those have nothing to do with... Huge advantage by doing the box art. <laughs> huge. He knows it inside out. And we will note, we won't be trying to beat Dragster 551. That's a very difficult thing. Um, some say impossible. Um, What's Dragster 551? Oh, it's a whole thing. We'll okay. get into it. All right. <laughs> if, you All right. if you remind me later. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've got this monitor here that uh, we'll be taking video call-ins on. So you'll be seeing their faces on this screen sitting on the couch with us. And, of course, big as well. We're not just going to keep them refined, uh, confined to this little area here. Um, I've got it so they're, they're full screen as well. But it's just for fun. Um, what else do we have going on? Well, let's get, let's talk about the auction items that we have right now. Um, and we have some really, really good auction items. Um, let's see if I have them on my tablet. Because that would be convenient. Um, no, I don't. So, let's, uh... Do them on here. Oh, it's cool. The chat's saying that people are rigging up monitors so that they can, like, watch. That's very oh, cool. Oh, nice. Like an extra monitor. Yeah. Oh, on the side so they can do their work. That's and right. Keep us on the side there. Oh, 
That's cool. It's Smart like we're thinking. hanging out with a lot of people today. I like that. And we've got. Fun. We will do our best to keep you from getting any work done today. <laughs> That's right. That's our main goal. Pay attention to That's us. That's the zero page homebrew guarantee. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no we will work distract will get you done. from your work. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got one, two, three, four, five monitors going in here. Oh, yeah. Six if you count the monitor on the camera. Correct. But that doesn't really count. Yeah, that's. That's not correct. So that doesn't count. It doesn't we have count two cameras ready to go. Uh, it's great. So I'm going to open the eBay auction so I can read them off. Oh, that that link didn't work very well at all. I don't think that link works. Uh oh. That I posted. I'm going to have to. Because I clicked it and it brought to. Oh no. It just okay. didn't work on this. So. Okay. So uh, let me read off the auction items that you guys can bid on. That all the proceeds. And they, so are they doing well already? No, it's. A, <laughs> it I, just started. I couldn't see from that far away. I thought I was like I thought because I'm, okay. I'm very far yeah, away. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I, I see you're saying I thought so too. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean that's not good? And I was like, oh, okay, oh, that's, that's a zero. That's yeah. all. <laughs> I know. Far away. It, it looks just like... started. We haven't even talked about them. So the first one is Draconian, uh, complete in box, signed which is one of the games we will be playing today. Ooh. It's this awesome space shooter made by Daryl Spice Jr. and it was donated by Daryl Spice Jr. and it's signed and complete in box. Next one is Medieval Mayhem with a rare clear shell that I may bid on because oh. that is a rare one. Um, then it's signed, complete in box, also Daryl Spice Jr. made it and donated it. And everything that is donated, all the proceeds will go to Stella. That's right. Hundred percent of them, and also any of the donations as well. And that's 100 important. Hundred percent. Yes. I mean, there's not We're that, not making money off of this. No. We and never... there's a lot of places that, like, you know, like, skim off the skim top. Skim a little. Ten percent. Nope. Hundred percent. Oh, the right. box is rare for medieval mayhem. Oh, is it oh, sold geez. out? Well, then I guess I have a rare box. Um, actually, if you want to grab these off the shelf, um, it's the yellow one. Medieval mayhem. So one thing I'm so happy about oh, for having the wider lens and bottom. is yep. you get to now see what the top the, shelf, the top shelf of what there's a, there's a shelf ah. above it, but you can start to see more of James's space. So oh, I'm going to bring up my thing so I can see. So there is Medieval Mayhem, and actually mine is signed because that oh it's shiny. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> mine is signed by Daryl Spice Jr. Um, this is nice. This is some so really this nice is art for that. Very nice art. Um, so that is a facsimile, not the one you'll get, but a facsimile, because this is mine. It's yes, my car. Right. <laughs> but it's very similar to the one you'll be getting. Um, the next one, uh, let's go to the draconian one. And that is... Oh, we found it before me. Yeah, there's stuff on the top, sorry about that. So there's the draconian. Yeah, you won't be able to see it, but it's wide. Um, that is one of my favorite <laughs> homebrews because it is. No, there's no, no, there's no. Just because of the no different lens. Which is, which it's is an too bad. amazing space shooter game. It is. And in fact, I had designed one of the levels in this Draconian game. That's right. Game. Dra I I remember that, now. That's one of the coolest homebrews I've played, I remember. Oh, yeah. And we will be playing it as well. Oh, that's awesome. I so like that, that one. That is awesome. Um, then the next one up is Space Rocks. Uh, complete in box, and it is the yellow writing, and that is donated by Daryl Spice Jr. as well, and it, it will be signed, and will include the Space Rocks sticker, um, and also up for auction is the Space Rocks poster that is signed, <laughs> big huge poster. <laughs> Darcy, um, I appreciate your <laughs> being the, the the holder of the, of the games is great. Next one is uh, Stay Frosty 2. It's the blue box, fifth in the end. Yeah, careful. Yeah. Okay. Should be okay. And that one is actually a special one. It is a complete box, and it's the limited edition cart number 51, which I don't have. I don't have the limited edition one. This one is the unlimited boxed edition. <laughs> um, then the next one is Stella's Stocking, cart number 153 with the manual signed. Very that on one, brand for what we're doing here. That one is actually not in a box because it never, never came with a box. Uh, oh, Stella's Stocking. Where is my Stella's Stocking? There it is. So I have the unlimited version, but the one that we will be... Um, 
that will be for the auction is a limited version, number 153 cart. Uh, the next one is Galaga Complete in Box, which is not up there because yeah. it is coming out at Portland Retro Gaming Expo on October 19th. Um, but you will get it very quickly if you bid on it because you'd be, probably be one of the first people to get it in the mail. Um, so that one is pretty awesome. Donated by John Shampo of Champ Games. That's definitely a killer one, right? That there. is a killer game. Everybody knows that because we've played it on the show a bunch of times. And we'll be playing it again okay, today, of I course. I want to see how I, how I can do How you fare again? Yeah. yeah. Have you played it? Did you play it yet? Oh, yeah. yeah, you did. yeah. Okay. We, we, I was there for the, the big release. I played it for the first time ever on stream. Oh, yes, that's right. You were there. Uh, the next one up for auction is the Retron 77. Okay. I don't know if you can reach that. I can get there. it to you. Want me to the Hyperkin. Be very careful. There's stuff on top of it. Oh, God. This is maybe more of a Darcy move. Yeah, Darcy. <laughs> yeah. Your, your height advantage is... Oh. Yeah. oh that's Sorry. Right. It's all good. Sorry about your ears. <laughs> R.I.P. headphone users. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that is a bit magical. So that height, man. It's the it's next a real one thing. is uh, the Retron 77, not this one, but it comes with a whole bunch of homebrew games built into it that have been collected by Nathan Strunk. Really? And not only does it come with those homebrew games, it comes with the instruction manuals for those homebrew games. Ah. Uh, the homebrew games are on on um, the, the, ROMs. the ROMs. They're on the SD card. They don't come with the, the boxes not, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. But they come with the instruction manuals. The instruction manuals were donated by Al Yuruso from Atari Age. Um, and the homebrews are donated by Chris Thank Walton, oh, Nathan Don't Strong, Thomas Yance, Manuel Rockstar. If you need my help. Hey! Murmuring. Daryl Spice Jr., Andrew Davey, Oscar Toledo G., Nano Chess, uh, Carl Garrison, and John Champo. So tons and loads and loads of stuff. And it also comes with a 2600 adapter, uh, a USB cable, an OTG cable for the 2600 adapter, and the Retrobit Genesis gamepad. So it's I want it just for the USB cable. That's, that's, that's the, just the USB that's cable. That's the bit I want. That's the big thing. <laughs> that's the killer item. <laughs> the star fell. Mm. I know it's very important. I know. It's it, gone. It did. Uh, the next one the is the uh, Astronomer, complete in box. I don't have a copy of that, but... Well, you better uh, bid. That's right. I better Ooh. bid. And it is the uh, limited edition version. It is the number 40 out of 40, because there's only 40 made of the limited edition. Whoa. Donated by David Fleming of Pack Rack Video Games, who is with us today in the chat. Um, and then Atari 2600 Homebrew Companion, Volume 1 and 2. Signed by Ed Freeze, who uh, is from, formerly of Microsoft. I think he was the vice president of Microsoft, who made the game Halo 2600. Uh, also signed by Daryl Spice Jr., copy of Volume 1 and 2. And Volume 2 is signed by Brock Keesge, uh who's Major Havoc, who did uh, Nexion 3D, and that was donated by Brian Mathern. And we are actually also going back to Astronomer, we're going to be going for the patch today. Oh, for shit. Astronomer, you need to get 20 points. Seems like a low number. It is not a low number. I've, I've never played it. It's very so. hard. Yes, it's Whoa. a fun game. Next one up is Gold Rush, which is a game that doesn't ex doesn't exist yet on cartridge. Yeah, we've but only it seen will, video of it. We've, we've only seen video. We haven't even played it. But it can be yours for the right price. Uh, that was donated by Dan Kitchen, who is in the chat today as well. Oh, Atari Age is here. Welcome, Al. Hey, Al. Hopefully, Al will be able to call in later at 6 p.m. Pacific time, which That's is right. that I've reserved a slot for him if he's able to call in. Um, yes, okay. Gold Rush, um, made by Dan Kitchen. We're very excited for that. We'll be premiering that game on our channel here coming up very shortly. Um, it's looking very good. Lots of fun. And everybody's seen the video by now. Uh, and lastly, we're also up for auction is Halo 2600. It's a cool complete game. Complete in box, signed by Ed Freeze himself. Damn. The guy who made the game, formerly a VP of Microsoft uh, Gaming Division. And um, and that is donated by Albert Yeruso. And that is, I believe, sold out the box, caught the boxes, I think. Um, 
So all these are very, very special items that are like one of a kind. You can't buy them, especially with all the signatures and stuff. Oh, but absolutely. you can bid on them. You can buy them now if you have the highest bid. And so we'll be looking at all the um, auction items later and catching up with them and maybe going in a little bit more and, detail. And thank you, James, and thank you, everybody, for, like, pulling together such an amazing plethora of things oh, to do. It's yes. like, you know... It's it, amazing how the community comes together. It could be embarrassing if we were up here being like, so you get a $5 Starbucks gift card? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, like... They, and it's going to cost you $25. And Who I, I wants think to, keep to in mind, bid? A thing to keep in mind when you're bidding on something for uh, like a charity auction yes it's like it's not the, just the, the item, amount right? of money that you put into it becomes like a part of the item like you're not getting a copy of whatever game or whatever it is like you're getting the copy yes the item from, for the charity from and like, the stellathon like, like the copy that in a practical sense it you are just getting the thing that you get but yeah. like it it has it has even it has if you value even if value. you don't care about it, it is a thing. <laughs> well, like it's a real other thing. Other people that, cared about it that bid on it yeah. before you. Absolutely, <laughs> you want that. you want it, but the other people wanted it, yeah. but you got it. And it would be so meaningful. Some, like you'll look at it for years. To I mean, come you and might have not an because idea. you might be uh, unswayed by such things. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. But many people are swayed by such things. You might things. be a golem with no feelings. <laughs> I remember. Okay, that's I me. remember a game convention that I went to. It was a board gaming convention yeah. in Ireland and they had it was uh Galecon and okay. they had a, a charity auction every year and every year they had like a nonsense prize like oh, a yeah. mug or a pen or something like this and it always always was like the highest bid of all of the things oh. at so it was the like auction. a donation but it was it, had, some... it was attached to this thing that was nonsensical to say, look at this thousand dollar pen or whatever. Yeah, it's like they're bidding on the mug <laughs> with the cat, the cat mug. <laughs> the cat mug. And they're so proud that they and won the, the cat. And mug. the thing is, like, they win it, and it's the but they they didn't win. I mean, they won the mug, but like the mug is worth the thousand dollars or whatever it is that they they bid on. Yes. It because that's what they bid on it. You know, it's it's sort of like how, well. And um. Yeah. It's um, like art, sort of. Yeah, it, yeah, it but, is. But not being art. I'm not... Yeah. I'm not the cat mug is not art. art. What's that? <laughs> the cat mug is not art? It might not <laughs> be art. I'm I'm just saying that, you know, like, what you what it was paid for it has, like, meaning in, a, in certain than, circumstances. More than the value of the item, yes. In certain circumstances. Yeah. Um, well, let's do this update right now. The Retron 77 is already at $100. Yes. It's, it's got a ton of bids all in a row. My thing's been That's going crazy. off like crazy. And, yeah, that... It, it's definitely worth a hundred dollars just by itself but all those add-ons it's worth a ton actually like if you had to buy all those things separately it's it's worth a lot so and as as the um show goes on if anyone wouldn't mind just keep posting that link for the new people because we'd, we'd like yes, to refresh please. it but if you guys that would be a huge favor to us if at any point you see us off the screen just throw that link up um and just collectively let's keep keeping that refresh so that anyone who comes in it'll be easy to later. find yeah because we, we we'll try to do it as well but we'll be busy doing yeah we'll be playing games, games. And... we'll be talking with people so it'd be a huge help to us mm -hmm. so unless you have the current top bid in which case we understand that you don't want to advertise yeah. it yeah like, you know, no don't is. don't I mean, look don't look you might be better off uh spending your time hacking the system and shutting <laughs> it all down so that you win That's but right <laughs> um so the first game we're going to be playing is the stacks and it's a game we wanted to return to that we played a long time ago it is very challenging. It's a cool game. It's a very cool game. It's it's the... Howdy, Thrust. Uh, oh, welcome, Thomas. Thrust! Uh, who is the first person who's going to be calling in to us in uh, short order. And this is... I've, I've kind of synced it up. This is not random. The stacks is done by Thomas Jens. Hey, okay. So we'll be playing the games of the person... What? How did that happen? It's so crazy. James. There's planning involved. <laughs> <laughs> it's as if someone thought about this. It's, it's not crazy. just random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been in the works for like four or five months. Oh, wow. And you have to do that and, when and you do And James things. was planning to do it earlier and cancel it because he wasn't ready. That's yeah, how much he cared about I was in thing. New York and I wanted to make sure things were all lined up. And we had a lot of great guests calling in. Absolutely. And we do. Oh, <clears throat> Eating things while talking. Um, so the Stacks is a official video game based on Ready Player One, the movie, the book, that kind of thing. So 
this, uh, if you have seen the movie, this, you'll be able to recognize some things in the game, but just like a lot of uh, Atari 2600 games based on movies, they're very loose, you know, it's not oh, yeah. photorealistic things going it's on. It's not photorealistic. I know. I'm it's out a little of here. crazy. Um, but the Stax game is super challenging. And unfortunately, it is not available for anybody out there to download. You can download the original one. This is an updated version of Whoa. the Stax. The original one that they made to tie in with the movie um, was hastily made. It was, it was a really quick one. And then Thomas Jens took the reins of the game and wanted to continue it on and fill, fill it out a bit more. So that's the one we're going to be playing. And it is not public yet. So we are very privileged to be able to play this. I'm going to hand it to Darcy because he has not played it yet. Yeah, yeah. And let's, uh, let's switch over. Uh, welcome, everyone. And um, Stephen A666, that is uh, uh, Steve... And Al Stephen just said, um, uh, he's got a huge of Stella. offset of boxes of, of stacks, and he uh -huh. hopes to get the game out someday. Yes. So, so if you're interested in playing it. That's right. So uh, message Thomas to uh, <laughs> work on the stacks. Actually, don't. Um, <laughs> don't bug him. Don't bug him. It's a lot of work to make these games. It is. Oh, yeah. And this is a huge game. It is. It's a massive game. So we're going to switch over. And that's not the game we're going to be playing, so press down the middle button, please. Uh, okay, so let's go down to today and go to the stacks, hopefully somewhere. Or did I miss it? Oh, I missed it. So go back up. Uh, go to homebrew because I did transfer every single game. Then go to the right or left. Yeah, keep going. Keep going to the stacks. It's ST. Yeah. Hi, Atari. Welcome to the show, Atari. That's the Thomas yes. game. Yep, that's the one. Uh, go to the bottom one, 2016 0511. And that's the one. Okay. Oh, that's not a good... Let's change that graphic there to the stacks. Now this even opening title screen is really, really cool. So, let me this up and get the yeah, proper and, graphics for it Ooh. and absolutely scum when you say that like scum. it's you know major respect to those who completed playable games because it's a lot of work oh it's huge work yeah. and, and your game was awesome man that was so much fun to play the other day yeah uh, i don't know if you got to see the stream but i really enjoyed that bird person <laughs> <laughs> he did he saw it afterwards yeah. oh I'll sweet I'll, re I'll read some out um so let's get into that let's play game one We descend into the city. Oh, Did you see don't the feel movie? Guilty. Or read the book? No? Okay. Started it will have no impact. Okay, so you can go in those doors. Oh, no! This is a, not an easy game, dude. <laughs> don't beat yourself up. Dude. Yeah, this is all hard, hard, hard game. Luckily, these things don't change. So you'll get better at it. Yeah, see? There, there you go. go. And the hilarious ah. thing is... That's, like, not even really anything. It's just <laughs> no, some points. It, it looks like something that you need to collect, but it's just points. No, oh, I died. <laughs> my jumping skills are... I'm playing again. Suck it. <laughs> no, dude, oh, yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah. This was, like, <laughs> my first play of the stacks was that. And probably when I replay, it's going to be that, too. It's not an easy game. No. And I think that it... It's, does it change each time? I can't remember. I think uh, no, it, no, no. You can change it. By selecting which level, like one, no. two, three, and yeah, it'll some are random. randomize it. So you can learn like where certain things are, I which think, is nice. Yeah. Oh, what a happy cat. Oh, he's happy. He is happy. Let me go back to my notes from before. It's okay. I it will quick, bring yeah. the pain to all of the viewers. This, you can understand why we were revisiting the stacks right now, yeah. Darcy. This was a challenging. Oh, game. this one was much easier. There we go. I found my. But that's the hilarious thing is that's only points. So like. Yeah. What are you trying to do? You're supposed to collect all these computer chips, if I remember correctly. Like there's, they, they allow you to sort of get. And there's like five levels, and and this is not Ooh, even like touching close. the surface. Yeah. Of, oh, how, yeah. of how much oh, stuff. That's a nothing. 
and yeah. What? You just gotta get practiced at this these mini games. These mini games are the hard part. Oh, where's my notes on the stack? Oh. oh. Okay. Oh nine two. Oh, a hamburger, and I was so hungry. <laughs> I got. Oh, that's what I. That's what I needed was one more person. Oh. And luckily now. <laughs> oh god. Ah! And you can't, they'll, they'll just kill you. There's, you can't no, there's jump nothing them. that you can do about them. But if you go like to the right or the left, there's a whole bunch of other levels. Like, you, this thing I keeps see that going. my color is on the. Yeah, that's ladder. an interesting, like, um, programming thing. But see, like, go to the right, like, past the screen, you can see there's so many different things. Or the left, whichever one, but see, it's um... like, there's quite a few. So this is cool because it lets you know it's like 1A. Yeah, where you are. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't think you can get past those. Uh, are those? What's going on I with the ladder? I think this is just the bar. Like, I think it just blocks you. Yeah. So then try just okay. for test. Go to the right, and we can you can find, like, the limits of... Because there's this, you can go up, but you can also, like... Go completely to the to, right, just to, to the far so right. So you can yeah, get yeah, a I sense of how big this game is. You die. <laughs> yeah. You have to go up the ladder or down the ladder to avoid them. Okay. You might want to go to the middle level so you can get past, if you want to go all the way to the right. Yeah. I Kurt Woolwich says, this game reminds me a bit of Roland's Ratlet Race for the C64. I don't think I've played that. I've played Radar Rat Race for the C64. I think somebody wouldn't uh, name their game Rat Race uh, Apologies, when there's already a very well-known... Oh. I'm going to eat my lunch, okay. but it's... Oh, Only because we are doing this for 12 hours. Yeah, you will see us eating on this show. Normally I wouldn't do it on stream, but we got I would. It's got to happen. <laughs> I'm not afraid of people seeing me eat. I don't know what you guys... I don't know what's the deal of what, what person hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I got beat when I ate. <laughs> so you do want to go in as many... Ooh, it's a priest. It's a pedophile. Actually. It's a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, and he and he just he just got you. He exposes himself to you, he, and he it censored. kills you. He's he's yeah. so. It's very traumatizing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, sexual uh, assault is a real thing. It's pretty, it's <laughs> Sorry, pretty. so you don't want to stay in that room. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Our, it's this game would right. get like an M mature. Oh, definitely. I think there's some <laughs> other interesting things that happen in it too. I, I remember it's, it's some questionable content. And Kurt says, oh. Roland's Rat So, like, I think you just have to not look at him, nah. though, if I remember nah. correctly. Ooh, the legs don't hurt you, I guess. Because Darcy, yeah. I, I think... Oh, yes, that's right. You can't so, like, look at him. So, as you just... It's, it's like the ghosts in Mario. If you don't see it, it never exists. <laughs> that's right. It's like, I'm not looking at you. You're not accomplishing. <laughs> no touching. No touching. No touching. No <laughs> touching. Oh. So I believe... That's what you need. That's the things you need. And you have oh. to complete the puzzle. I see. I I, I, I gotta say, I think that that. Yeah, I don't remember. I the think that's all either. I'm getting from this room. RC70. I don't remember any that's molestation in the movie or book either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an add-on, I guess. It is, and it's Maybe. this is a harsh post-apocalyptic future, trapped in VR, constantly in threat of sexual. So it's one, abuse. two, three, four, A, B, C, D. Did I just yeah. lose a okay. life hitting that wall? Did you? Yeah. No, but it teleported me to the other side. Oh, okay. Hmm. So I'm guessing that, given that there's multiple things I need to get, no, I think I need to go in the middle one. Yeah, to traverse across? To just see where um, I should go. And um, Scum uh, Okay, software. don't look at him. And he wings, Why too. Why is he winging? What, oh, a cool. great, what a great game. You can just run him? through him. Now you're yeah. fine. Now you're fine. And so Scum Software just uh, answered a question from earlier, just the, why the character appears on the ladder as well, and he said it's just a side effect of the 2600 sharing colors. There isn't enough yes. clocks to change colors for each sprite. So that's why, like, you see you your little... See and he, when you jump, you can see the difference, and, like, you're kind of... You're sort of on the ladder as well. Yeah, uh, what I'm guessing is uh, that is... The missile is used for the second ladder. Mm -hmm. Um player one missile and the let's say that player one is your character so it uses the player one missile for the second oh battle. okay yeah, and this are, is where the game ends <laughs> this is where the game ends for you backwards 
Oh, Almost. Oh. You're doing really good there. You got the right idea. And the soul crushing part is when it's not even something that you oh. need. I don't know, it's just nothing, an empty room. You're like, oh, some. I another... feel it was something important in that You're room. Like another hundred points, yay. So, are things in the same place? Do you know? <laughs> they are? So, we can, we could, we should map this out. Oh, yeah. Do you want to get um, paper in the printer? Just pull out the bottom drawer. Here's a pen, and you need a surface. I do. Um, I will give you a surface. Oh shit, that's perfect. There you go, and we'll just go through one by one. Okay, so this is the this opening. This is A two. Okay, so this is a game. Yeah, A two. This is a game. Where you need a cartographer. Um, so go A two and then like it's one, like getting two, those three, things four, five, to six. finish the game. The points and the game are separate. Yes, but not irrelevant. So is this the because opening screen? You have yes. to do. You have to take risks to get points, and you all and they're separate from. Okay, don't map it out. Just just um, go A two. Like just just put A two at the top and like you can finish the wherever. game without getting any bonus points. But it would be a lesser completion of the game than if you because go around and collect could all beat the things. You. Yeah, like if the, if ten people finish the game, yeah, and you don't go for the points, and somebody else goes for the points, they, they did better than you. Yes, especially they if the game's easy. Won. Yeah, yeah. So let's we have to number the doors too. So okay. this is section A two, and let's just start at the top. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six. Even if they're empty. So I'm gonna go into door three. Where you could jump both at the same oh, time. Oh, that was good. Is but there? Uh, I wouldn't do that. I don't think that's pretty risky. You yeah, know, I I was there you go. Yeah, you I was wondering it. if so that it was is, relevant. That is nothing. Just yeah. put just put no floppy disk. It's it not nothing. Give you anything. It's points. We just talked about how <laughs> the points are relevant. Um, why not complete the map? Okay, put a disk. Put right disk beside. Just put FD. FD floppy disk. Yeah. Ah. I put five and three quarters. <laughs> Not a three and a half. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, is that a door down there? No, it's not. Uh, Between the buildings? No, no. no it's just no. a chimney making it look that So way. this is a floppy disk too. On um, This is uh, four. Or door four. Stacks has four variations. In the Number one is the original game, which was accompanied by the book for a contest where you could win a DeLorean. This was not done by me. Oh, <laughs> so I want the DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> so we're playing the version that's not done by him. Oh, okay. Maybe we but it has his version. name on it. Mm -hmm. Well, what did, you do? what did he's you adapting. do? What did you do? What did you do? You're in five now, right? Yeah, I'm going to go for five. Sick. Nothing. Empty. And it's a dangerous world. Dangerous world that I'm not gonna go for. I think of those oh, as octopi. They do look like octopi with a bunch of legs. Have you seen an is it an octopus? No, it's um what are those other creatures of the sea that can change colors and yeah, walk on uh, their legs? Cuttlefish. And cuttlefish. They're crazy. They are. Um burger. Extra life. Oh, extra life. Yeah. yeah, life. So that one is definitely worth going for. But is it worth losing a life to get? <laughs> oh, never it is. Sorry, what I mean to say is it <laughs> worth losing three lives to get it? Three lives to get it? <laughs> Which is what it... Definitely not worth losing the, three the lives risk. to get it. <laughs> so what's this? A... I'm not... I'm going to go okay, for so the Okay, so that was first. A1 then. Then this is A2. Oh. That's okay. Oh, okay. This is two you're in now? Uh, yeah, two. Sick. So this is like a swarm of bees. Floor bees. Floor bees, yeah. <laughs> they can't really fly well. Uh, and that's a disc. Floppy disc, five and a quarter. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay. You, you can then just escape. You got stung by the bees. So this is, is nothing. That is nothing. So 
There's nothing to the right then? It's just a uh, empty? Oh, what? the right was A2, I believe. A2 yeah. floppy disk. But, uh, don't bother writing it down. No. Don't go down there! No, 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 no! Middle run. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you you saw that it's it was fine. It's dangerous, But though. it's dangerous. It the middle dangerous. one is it's so safe. far safe, yeah. I guess this is level one. And so probably we know that it's all safe So what's, level one. what... Is this A3 now? Well, I don't know, because that said A2. I think the only the... I think only the ones without houses... <laughs> Have numbers. Yeah. But what would we call this then? Um, no. It's definitely level A. Uh, it, it's still relevant. The first. That's the first one. This, let's call yeah, that. Yeah. Let's call that other one one. Okay. What happens and, if you go to the two. left of the other one? Is that I just think you A1? see an empty room and that says A one. Really, and it has a, a wall too. Can and we it, yeah, and it has a wall. That I just want to make sure because yeah. then that then that, that makes my system pretty easy actually. Yeah. So yeah, that's A two, and I'm just curious. Thomas says his Wi-Fi hotel Wi-Fi is annoying. 360p. Hotel Wi-Fi just breaks. sucks. <laughs> um, Thomas, you'll probably yeah. There we go. A1. Sick. You probably have to disconnect from the stream. Well, you will. Um, when um, you chat with us, but we're more entertaining than than uh, the stream. We are the stream. <laughs> okay. So now we're now you're in like sort of A2. Area, A2. Right? Let's yeah. Let's call it A2 because it's the second area and this is door number four. Oh look away look away wink oh oh so many weird feelings <laughs> and, and it is which, and, which and my first again? instinct I think was Perfect. correct that it is which, a which priest. Which one was this? Was this one or two? Uh, <laughs> uh this is four door four. Cool. And it is that's a smart one to get. Very good one. It's good to know where all the extra lives are because it's a painful game. And it's got uh, pitfall type little holes and ladders. So this is number two. And floppy disk. Look away! Galaga's at 167? Dude. Holy crap. That doesn't surprise me though, man. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Retron. This is a puzzle piece? Is in door number one. It's a different piece. The uh, last time it was a different piece. Randomized. But it was the, it was the same picture. Right, the green. Yeah, picture. and you need them all, so it doesn't matter which one it is, really. No. Ah. Okay. So I have to go down and to be check safe. out those other doors. You've done the middle one. You need to go do that one. Wait. Yeah. I don't know why I thought you were gonna go, <laughs> but I did, and it scared me. Empty. Nothing. Nothing in the three? Nothing there. Yeah. Cool. Nothing in five. Nothing in five? Yeah. And then there's nothing for... Just, you can just put nothing, nothing, nothing for all the other ones, because there really is nothing. So I've completed the whole first... Whoa, down! ...floor. No, there's no door there. There's no door there. Where? Nothing to get. I've done that one in the bottom right. Yeah, but didn't you do this one too already? I did this one. And did the ones that... Thing. You did the top one. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm saying stay in the middle where it's safe. Oh, don't go down. Okay. Don't go up. Or down or anywhere. Oh, there is. Another, this yeah. is number three. Because there would a be a three. wall if there wasn't. Mm. The teleporting wall. So, this, this is door is... number four. Ooh. Number four? Puzzle piece. Cool. Oh, two pieces of the puzzle now. Mm, and it seems like Hold you on. need a lot That's of pieces. That's three. That's not four. Yeah, that There's was one, three. Two, three, four. Sorry. It's okay. Messing up your it's no problem. thing here. Wink. Hey, yeah, he's got robes on, right? And like the cap. Yeah, there is a <laughs> real uh, priest. Uh, just hey, he looks. In there. He looks like a. Like That's a, a floppy disk for number perfect. four. Man, I, I'm nailing this system. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you got it down. Yeah, I know what's up. Yeah, I see. I'm the proof. <laughs> see, I'm the proof. Mm -hmm. So this is number two, and it's a floppy disk. Points. And it is a dangerous place. Oh, I feel very nervous. No nervous needed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course there's no nervous needed. Nothing actually happens if you fail. There's a life. 
one step closer to death. We're all we're yeah, losing you, our life, yeah. no matter what. Another <sighs> priest, and it's a lot of them. The wink is just really just, the, the you know, detail that just makes I cherry like, on top. I don't like oh, how God. this game is training me to like uh, uh, child monsters or 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 whatever you want to call that guy because it's obviously good. I prefer it because it's easier to get oh, past. <laughs> so that was an extra life. Definitely, yeah. Or Note dirt, that he's quicker. These are quicker. Are and they? also, like, yep. aren't we playing so. a child? No, I, I so, died. Like, we are. Like they got, they get closer to you. It's not enough to make a difference, but no, uh, maybe they're not. Maybe they weren't closer. He was, he's, he's I thought more, they were faster. In he's the red more one. of a flasher than a that is the child that molester. is the correct word That's because right. he didn't touch me. Like I walked right by him, and he's like, "Yeah, eh, we're all cool. Oh god, I'm gonna die." Oh, oh no, James! Oh no, <laughs> You're, ah. nothing left of you but a hat. Hey, perfect so time to six, get a burger. It is. Yeah, and it didn't build up past three because I had three, got a burger, and when I died, it went down to two instead of three. Staying on three. So it does max out. Ah! Ah! That's terrible! Damn. That is... Oh, there's, oh, and there's burger. a burger there. Okay, Pretty, this is, yeah. and this is A4, right? Yeah. Eh, but, I don't bother, because it's just out in the open. Yeah, there's oh. only oh, three I'm spots. But here's the question. You've done Welcome, all the rooms. Welcome, Dirty Harry. Let's check it out. This is what I've been doing, James. So, like, I put... Because these are blank things, so it just actually works out oh, nicely. okay. You could put a burger there, then. That's yeah. cool. That works really well. That's really good, actually. Um, Dirty Harry is the, a very main contributor to making this worth buying. He has been uh, relentlessly working on updating the uh, Stella on this to make it uh, play all the awesome games, all the homebrew. So now you can play all the homebrew on it. If you visited all the rooms... Yes, I have. Oh my god. Oh, you, that's... That, it's funny that you just answered my question. I was like, how do you get to the next place because you didn't find all the puzzle pieces? <laughs> yeah, no, we're on B. Now no, I know. Ooh, it's a fluffy drive. I mean... Oh, so which one are you on now? You're like... Uh, we're on floor B between four and three. Cool. And we're in door number three. And... This uh, game looks much bigger now that uh, you're doing it visually like that. You're in three? Cool. Yeah, this is like we kind of had that discovery when we first played it, and we're like, uh, yeah, this is. I don't think they're, they're the same. No, no, I, I agree. They are the same. <laughs> oh, that damn flasher. I thought I died well, because they were moving faster, but it, it, that wasn't it. Cool. it was Which room was this again? Just, game? Sorry. Uh, room three, and it's just a floppy disk. One of the things I appreciate playing games with you, James, is yes. you're equally as methodical as I am. <laughs> you have to be. There's some people who are, like, not methodical at oh all. Oh, my God. And it's like, well, you didn't go in that room. I'll and get it later. And it's, and like... it's just random chaos. For just, like, <laughs> and I would say you're more methodical than me, oh, which, is, really bad. which is saying a lot. I get crazy. So this is room number one. It's a floppy disk. Or door number one. And especially with, like, RPGs like this, yeah. You just... Oh, you have to. Pixel. Yeah, you have to. Pixel, Pixel? realize that everything cool is happening in this room. <laughs> it's all about this room. Hey? It's very hot, though, unfortunately. It's very warm in here. But I knew it would be. We do have fans trying to blow the air. Oh, it'll be great. It's, it's all good. I'm wearing a t-shirt today, so we're set. Hi, are you gonna mess with me? Oh, they switched it up. Oh no! What? Why did you look? I well, you knew that it was a. a tried to turn a, around, but a there's a cat on me. Oh my god! It's, it's Cat's messing me up. He's he's fluffy. Pixel. I know my lap is not as enticing, but. <laughs> oh, it's just a floppy. What is this? Is two right? All that. Ah, uh, yes, two. Galug is now 300? Holy oh shit. Oh my god. That's amazing. That makes sense <laughs> Wow. What's the currency? Is it Canadian currency? Yeah, it's Canadian currency. That makes sense. It's because it's before. Because we're in Canada. That and means else? everybody's getting a discount. 
And also, uh, Steve's right. in Canada, too. Yeah, everybody's getting a discount. It's not as much as you think it is, yeah. Americans. <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah, the, and, the and if there's anyone from there. Europe... Whew. Oh, deal. Score of a... Good deal. So I didn't get four... F um, five or six. Five or six, yeah. yeah. We gotta check those out. Although this is dangerous territory, man. Oh, but I can go down the ladder. Did you, you didn't see Ready Player One, Darcy, the movie? Nope. Did I you started see reading the book, I did. I haven't seen the movie yet. It was just a... It was a movie. I was so excited by, like, the milieu and so disappointed with, like, the reality of what they were doing. It's just a floppy desk. Um, Which is too bad. It's, it's like, it's just nostalgia in a, in a movie. It's... Well, yeah. Also, I said this last time on stream, but it just bugs me that, like, these people are so beautiful and, like, well-kept and their hair is nicely coiffed. And just <laughs> the whole thing bugged me because I was like, if you're just hanging out on VR 24 hours a day, ah, like, there's no ah. way that you have good hygiene. There's no way that you're, like, well-showered. Ah! Now what do I do? You go jump the lightning. Oh. If you can. Oh I, oh, I could have stayed on the left. Oh, when the oh left. yeah, wait. To... There we go. How many? I have zero lives left. Wonderful. But, but we, we know to... where all the lives are <laughs> That's for true. the next round. That's true. I'm going to go down because I think it's faster. Yeah. Yay! Hey, there's hey. one. That's number six. Stacks is one of the games included on the Retron 77 item. Ooh, Ooh Nathan Strom sweetening in the pot. Wow, is it? I haven't. I didn't read off the off the games list, so is, you could get this game. Is it this version, Nathan? Because nobody has this version except for me and Thomas Yens. Whoa! But is this the right one? That's one of the perks of yeah. being. I don't on know the if it's the one that's included channel. on the Retron 77, but he says it is. So that is ah. Uh, Whoa. Whoa! That was really close. Go upstairs. Yeah. You're quite. You're in quite the corner here, aren't you? Can you. Oh, you can jump on the ladders. Ah. Oh, that's gonna nice. change your lives. That is going to help. Can you jump off the ladders? No. But you can jump onto them. But that's gonna. That's gonna help. We've done this room completely. Yes, this one's done. Okay. Uh, now we're on to yeah. Oh, there we go. Thank you for posting that, Al. The link to the auctions. Yeah. Thanks so much. So this is the next area over. I got you. And uh, in eight minutes, we're going to have Thomas Jens come in and talk with us. That's exciting. That's um, exciting. Let me just check my schedule here because we do have to move on from this. Uh, I thought we'd have tons of time to play games, but if you'd say, oh, 12 hours, that's really an hour for 12 well, games. And we do a 24-hour game night at the store. Every year. Yeah. And every year you're like, oh, I'm going to play so many games and this and that and all these I'm long games. And then you play games, you, you play the long games because you can. And then you're like, I only played six games. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> six games. How did that happen? <laughs> oh, it is it's this, not six. It's more. But. It is this version. So that is a huge bonus to, to have the uh, Retron 77. You get unreleased games. That's that insane. That nobody has. You get and to play you get this. hardware, and oh, you get a great, great piece of hardware. You get a get a Genesis ripoff controller, <laughs> not an actual <laughs> Genesis want controller, that? but they're cheap. You can get that. Um, so this is door number four. Why am I trying to maximize the time? I don't know. There's no time I... limit. <laughs> oh, it's well. There is a time limit in how long we can play this game for. That's true. Yeah, I don't think that's. Oh, it's nothing. No. What was this for? Yeah. So there's absolutely no reason to go in here. Isn't that, like, that really hurts the morale, you know, when that That happens. I lost a life? Like, yeah, for nothing. You know. Yes. So number three is number two. Oh, boy. Better be a life at the end of this. Oh, that was not close enough. Nothing. Oh, this is nope. a disappointing Sorry. level. Don't eat my sandwich. <laughs> that sandwich is for me. James is vegan, so he never has meat really in the house. So my sandwich is ham. So I think he has lots of meat. I think though. the cats are stoked. He has cats. lots of meat because uh, <laughs> oh, the cats, that's true. The cat's food is meat. Well, yeah, yeah but I think that like they, but but that's so specifically like the it canned is stuff. So I think have, for them, yeah. they're like smelling something and being like, ooh, this. So let's just quickly they're check like my out. friend, Marilyn. 
did Aaron has like, access to some yeah. cat food. He's like, what is this? That's, right. <laughs> is, get, that's all he thinks is. We it's need cat to get food. that cat food from that guy. That is our friend. He's, so this is uh, this is Thomas Yentz's. You can see level three, four. Um, so we're gonna go. And it's cool because I get the keys too. Uh, sorry, I'm playing. So we're gonna do level two here. Actually, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Sure. And so you can come over here. Now Darcy's head's oh, gonna. I look just hit my head on the thing. I'm sorry, friends. Really big. It's going to look. I'm just not used to the mic being size. there. And I'll map. Oh, Actually, sick. we're not mapping because this is a different level. Yeah, there's only there's only so much. But we can I see. wanted to show off Thomas Yance's con contribution to the stacks. Sick. Oh, I get to play. And we will do this. We will definitely re be revisiting this. Yeah, and that that's useful. Yeah, so I'm gonna make sure we know what the hell this is. Whoa! Whoa. Ladder. D1. Yeah, and we're like, st whoa, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Death immediately. Shit just got real. Oh yeah. Up in this. this is like more mazy, and oh, it's just telling me like go that way. You're go that way. You're you're going the wrong way. Yeah, it's just it's a wall, but it's like... no, no, it's not. It's not. What? It's all different. I know. It's crazy. How far could you go? Oh, it probably repeats. But Look at when that. you go back, you have to go through all the ones you went through. Oh, but he oh, had to so go through multiple. So, oh. like, I thought it was maybe just a wall that you couldn't see, but maybe there's maybe there is something stuff. beyond. Oh, there. I guarantee you there is, but like, oh, static ones. He's used to them moving. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh God. Look, <laughs> like you see, like my. Get in there. Get in there. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's not okay. easy, man. <laughs> God. Look, Darcy, stop it. <laughs> You're you quit being a Darcy. <laughs> oh, this is not an easy game. No. This is uh, Thomas Yentz made it into a challenge now. Which is awesome. Oh, now we finally get to to hear Thomas Yentz pronounce his name. Ah. He's he's phonetically spelled oh you did it. Well he's yeah, with these ones you have to just nail it. Oh it's... boy. Timing. Oh, oh. god! <laughs> it, it, okay. it wrapped around. Holy I fuck. Like, look at this. It's like. Oh. It's like, don't bother. Sorry, you just risked your life for. I, I keep don't... going. Keep going. It's telling you to go back, oh, but I'm like. I don't nah. believe. Aussie, oh, bad timing. You have to do it so oh, specifically. Geez. Those look faster. They look faster. No, you have to go like right away. See, like, fuck. You have to man. follow it. As soon as it, the second one moves, go. No, too slow. I might make a jump. Jump! Oh, it's Yay! A, it told you to turn that around. Big ol' liar! I knew but, it. And now I have to somehow get I back. I knew if there wasn't a wall that it's it the was same. there. You have to move right away. You have to follow the second one immediately. Okay, we're doing this. We're doing this now. And then you have plenty of time. There you go. Yay! Now the maybe arrow that's is just like in the direction oh, this we is, gotta go. Maybe that's just an exit sign. Somehow I've got to dodge this Maybe. like late. Yeah. That now I got to dodge this one. Does it just straight up kill me? No, you just gotta, you just gotta see where it pauses and go through. When it pauses. I think the next there time we play. Oh, oh, I think we should play Thomas Yentz version because this is way more challenging than <laughs> the original version. <laughs> okay, well, aren't there dude number four as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, let's just go to four. Let's okay, see. okay. Oh, you have to die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Reset. That's not gonna be hard. Let me see if game. Wait. There we go. No, no. no. Oh, you can make your own levels too. So Those four are just resets. We'll try out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that? You could go over to the numbers and change the levels. Hmm. Like make them your own. <laughs> he scums like you're dying almost as much as in my game. Almost. It's almost. True. Yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, yeah, god. Yeah, this one's so much faster. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's what this is. It's just a faster version. You don't want to play this. This is just so Oh, easy. everything is faster. No, you're going to Including you. That would I be see. death immediately. Which one Go back to two again. <laughs> yeah, keep going to the right and see if those are liar, lying, lying signs. Yeah, these signs seem to be lying. It may just be like, that's the that's the main area that you need to go to. So I'm going to get Thomas Yentz starting to The one thing is that it, it always says one. Where's the wall? It just says, like, chain. Oh, let's see how far we can go. Oh, what? He had to go. Thomas. Yeah, okay. That seems...
We do have 11 more hours, so it's not like we don't have time to test the limits of exactly. Atari's, uh... That's a good point. I'm feeling like this is a fruitless endeavor. This is feeling... I feel both that it's fruitless and that I, we're wasting looping? time. <laughs> yeah. And that at the end there really is a prize for <laughs> the person who has the wherewithal the to go all the way. Do all I have to way, go all the way back? Yes. Oh wow! It that's what track. made me think. That's what made me think there might be something there. A is very the fact nice that prize. It remembered. And the last one lied to me. It's the last piece of the puzzle. That's is right. at the end. <laughs> you just have to trust. That's the true test. So Thomas, you just need an elastic band um, on your joystick. And just walk away and go have dinner. Yeah. That's right. Just, <laughs> um, so Thomas Yance will be back in two hours, so we will just continue on and get him back in um, when he is back. But it's almost time to change games. And um, we're going to do is, an update on the... What are you talking about, James? This is Twitch Dynamite right here. This oh! <laughs> oh, no. He typed that four hours ago. But okay, just, no, he is here. Just he's up. here, he's good? Yeah, okay, thank you. sick. So Thomas Yentz is here. So we're all good. So we're going to switch games now. Okay, okay. As soon as you die. No. No, no, go on. I have faith that you can die real quick. <laughs> See, all you need to do is know <laughs> that you're supposed to die, and then you are... You'll play perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> of course. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Now what you have to do is like, oh, I'm doing so well. I'm doing awesome at this game. And then okay, you will. Okay, you died. Hey, hold on. No, we don't have time. Oh, pull down the middle. Got Taskmaster. It. Death. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, because I have gone. to start the game before. Make, makes sense. So mappy it's, or it's mappy and we're going for high scores. Okay. This is where you have an advantage. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the minimum high score to beat the first person is 6,119. Dude, ArenaFoot's on there. He is, with a pretty decent score. Fuck yeah, okay. Um, the top score is by Nathan Strum on uh, NTSC. Uh, it's 91,730. Um, this isn't the final version of Mappy that I have, but this is the version we have to play. I see. Because everybody else is playing this version. Um, and we have to go left B and right A for difficulty. Um, okay. So there we go. So we're going to be talking with Thomas Yentz coming up right now. Um, he is the programmer for Star Castle Arcade, Toy Shop Trouble, Boulder Dash, I have some news about that later, Ooh. Uh, Swoop's Mini Game Collection, Jammed, Starfire, The Stacks, which we just happened to have played. <laughs> Um, what? A, a ton of trackball hacks, which are up there. We That's had a, badass. We had a trackball hack um, special episode, uh, double episode, a while back, where we played all the trackball games. Um, Ram Pong, which hopefully will come, be coming out soon. Uh, Robot City, which is awesome, and he needs to finish that game. Did you play Robot City? It's the tanks moving around in the city, and you have to shoot them. Somebody did. One of you did. I don't think so. And three dots. Um, so really let's. Tanks, but I don't know if it was it's that a really, one. really, really awesome game. Cool. Okay. Should so, I give it a go? Um, I'm or should we wait for you? Going to change the graphics because it still says the stacks, which is not what we want. We need Mappy. Darcy's a giant. There we go. Roar. It's so great. Oh, yeah. The game goes away when we do the interviews. But, um... We'll figure that out. Oh, one second. Something is awry. I just oh. have to set something up. One second, please. Yeah, it's super cool that, um... They, someone was saying that go. it displays as U.S. on the U.S. links, but it's for sure Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, originally Canadian, but it'll localize the prices. Nathan just said he's not in the lead anymore. Route 42. <gasps> what? 114,000. Wow, crap. that is not a tiny jump. That is not a that tiny is substantial. jump. substantial. Shall I st stop the stream now? Uh, yes, because I'm going to be calling you in very short order. Like, in seconds. Like, now. So, yeah, stop the stream now. And, uh... Oh. Let's get guy. this going. Oh, oh my god.
got some beats going here. R.I.P. Uh, headphone users. Somebody answered, and it's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. So I'm just going to adjust the volumes here so we can hear you. OK, so say something again. Welcome to the show, can Thomas. You can you see me? I uh, can't see you, but we can hear you, Hi. which can is you? half the half the battle. Um, <laughs> no, I can only see your Hi. little Hi. symbol. So click on the uh, video camera icon. Oh, something's happening! Hey, Yay! Thomas! Welcome. So I'm going to switch it over so everybody else can see you. One second. There we go. We're in the year 20. 19. 2019, we have the technology. I think it's 1982. Actually, so, with Max Headphone. Wait, what? what so you where, can, he was the future. It looks really cool because we have your face on the monitor here and you framed yourself really well, actually. <laughs> so that's just your floating head that's on the couch with us. It's so cool. Um, but I'll make you, uh, I'll make not, you be, I'll make the phone focus. He's focus just now. behind the couch. He's just behind the, he's hiding behind the couch. So, welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that it worked again. I cannot really follow it because the team is very on and on. But I saw you playing the deck. Yeah, you're, you're in a uh, hotel room with uh, some sketchy Wi-Fi, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a whole yeah, thing. So I'm currently on a cycle on a cycle along the river Alba, along the river Alba, Germany. Germany. So, so I have to take what I have. So it's nothing better. Yeah, exactly. You have to take what you get. So please, yeah. for mm. my sake, please pronounce your name for me, your last name. Yench. 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 With a sh yeah. at the end. Okay, so I was saying Yents, but it's Yench. Okay, so I'll try my best to do that pronunciation from now on. Um, and the stream James is you saying is work, reverb and lots of echo. Oh, reverb and lots of echo. Um, one second. Oh, yes, probably that's from, do you have any, do you have um, earbuds or headphones that you can put in? Isn't it because they're getting... Okay. It's it's because it's not from our end. It's from him because we're feeding back to him, and then it's going in his well, why microphone. Why are we hearing it then? If the extreme people are hearing it, it's different for them. They don't hear what we hear, okay. because otherwise we would give them feedback. We don't hear ourselves through it. Excellent. Well, now thanks, it should Thomas. be good. Thank you so much. Is it um, now? So now now you can say something, and it should not feed back through there. Okay. Let's okay. Let's try. Okay. Oh, I have to turn down our side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because they're picking, they're hearing uh, him through our speakers now. That's what I was thinking. So it was getting double. Um, I don't know how we're going to solve that. <laughs> That's not too easy. Okay, so we'll do our best. Where are the speakers over there? Should I turn yeah. this? Yeah, turn that away. It's towards you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm the local star now. <laughs> Darcy's, that's a great shirt, by the way, Darcy. Okay, so, um, so true. we're nice. just playing so your game, uh, The Stacks, and it is wonderful and amazing. Uh, well, not you've you've taken it on, I guess. You've you're you're continuing it from what was what was being made before. Yes, that's that's correct. Um, so what what is really left on the stacks that you need to do? Yeah, that's a problem. I don't feel it's good enough, so I can release it, but I don't exactly know what I should add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it looks pretty complete from Hell what yeah. like the little part that we saw that we were playing of your level. I wish that we knew that your levels that I had the notes back that your levels were 
two and four. The two, three, and four rather than one, and one was the original. But it looks like two. Oh, I, I think I remember when we played it last time. It was the difficulty balancing, um, like the the challenge sure. if it's too hard or too easy. Uh, yeah. So I think we'll definitely be playing it again in the near future. Um, and doing the mapping, because I don't think we did mapping last time. No, we just randomly ran through, which is never... No, not no good. one recommends that. Especially for a game like that, where it definitely needs some mapping <laughs> to happen. Cool. Cool. Yes. And um, in your game, what is it, Robot City? Oh my god, that's an amazing game. Um, <laughs> and that, that definitely needs to be finished as well. Um, that is uh, just a fun, simple game. I know I'm getting on you about finishing your games, and that's terrible. But uh, but it's mostly more praise for how how really good the games are um, that you that you've made. Um, so the main topic and focus is, of course, Stella today. Um, they do what we're doing the fundraising for, and maybe you can do talk a little bit about. Um, how you use Stella to do developing, um, if you do use Stella? Yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, um, I started developing using Zet26. That's an old emulator. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. I'm just okay. making sure that we don't okay. feedback. I'm doing um, selective, sound selecting uh, sound management here, muting ourselves, so people out there don't get uh, totally... Yeah, because the picture is is just a mess. I see some pic, some pixels, and that's all my Wi-Fi gives gives me. Um, so yes, I started developing with Set Twenty Six, but uh, eventually, I think it was during Boulder Dash, I switched to Stella, and never looked bad. And and when I when I stopped developing the stacks because I was frustrated by the games by the game. I started helping out Steven with Stella. So um, for the last two or three years, I don't know, I'm working with Steven and uh, Dirty Harry on Stella. So um, trying to make it even better than it was before. And this is a lot of fun because we're talking a lot. We know each other, how we tick. And we it's, it's really enjoyable. Something different than game developing. Um, and but I'm I'm doing game game developing in the par in parallel as well. So now I'm doing two things. That's excellent. So um, what uh, what parts of Stella are you focusing on to to help them out? Oh, it's it's <laughs> multiple parts. Um, I I worked on the UI on the inter on the user interface. Uh, I did the phosphor effect. It's lots of things. Um, just when I, we have a lot, we have a large list of to dos and bugs and improvements, and I constantly add other things to it to Stephen's frustration because the list is not getting shorter but longer. And when I find time, when I find time, I take one and uh, yeah, try to implement it. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, so I'm, the, I'm the one who is seeing Stella a lot from developer perspective, so I'm probably. Giving some input which uh, Stephen is not cannot know because he hasn't done a game yet. Maybe this will change. So that's my role. That that makes sense, and it is really good that you are coming from a developer's point of view, um, so that um, so that you're really not only improving it for the people playing the games because the emulation will be closer to the real thing but you're making it better for developers um yes. possibly yes. even like back-end stuff like the uh debugger or you know some of the the ui when you press the tilde and and look at the code of what's going on so that's yeah and and uh steven not being a uh programmer that's it's good to have a wide variety of people helping out and and I guess what you do is you just go down the list and go, yeah, I could think I can handle that. Um, you know the things that you need to the, to, the big to do list. And uh, yeah. yeah, he sent along to me that yeah, the to do list is really really massive. But I guess things rise up to the top. Yeah, the last the last thing I did was controller enhancement, keyboard controller, and um, 
uh, physical joysticks will be better in the next release, stuff like this. And before that, I did with Steven together the time machine, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so that's uh, the things I'm most proud of. Yeah, the time machine, that would be really, really helpful because, you know, if you die and you're trying to test something out and you, like, you finally get to replicate it, you can rewind it back and keep replaying and mm -hmm. then trying different things to, to replicate that, that issue. It's like, oh, that's why some people don't experience it, but other people experience it. Right. Yeah. Um, so with the time yeah. machine, are you able to um, go in and change developer options? and just change anything you want and then try and replay. Yes, yes. But it's not only for, for developers. I mean, for players, it's also nice. I mean, you die and you, you just uh, jump back a few seconds and try again. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah, you get to... <laughs> that would be handy. That would be very handy. You get to like a really, really high level and you're like, oh, come on, I want to see the end of this game. And uh, rather than, you know, trying to replay it over and over again, or you get to practice the hard part yeah. of the game. Because imagine like playing a game for two hours, and then you get to this part, and then you have one life left, and you have that's the only chance you have to practice the game. And with the time machine, you just rewind it, play it again and again and again, and then yep. you get good at it. Yep. Because that is a definitely frustrating part of playing playing games where you get to the end boss, and you get to play it only once. Yeah. <laughs> so ah, what today, is today? Times have changed. I mean, when when I grew up, you had to play it like this. <laughs> it's right. You had, uh, yeah, you had to. That's the only thing you could do. You either played in the arcade and got a whole bunch more quarters, or you know, <laughs> restarted the Atari and go from the start right yeah. right again. <laughs> um, but yeah, everybody now there's games that you don't even die in. You just kind of infinite lives or you rewind like the rewind is part of the mechanics of some games yeah a lot a lot of games now prince and of persia prince of persia yeah um it wasn't the best version uses of it <laughs> yeah so and but like they, but they work it yeah save yeah. lots of save so you, points you get similar and, you get similar to having to replay but you don't have to start at the beginning but, but they work it into the games now yep. it's like part of the games absolutely so that yeah. it's not really seen as cheating it's just you know it's part of yeah, the yeah. game so what is what is next for you? Are you are you doing developing? Are you taking a break? Or are you concentrating on Stella? Or are you just doing a bunch of stuff all at once now? Uh, there's something I cannot talk about. I'm doing I'm doing something. Um, yeah, it's 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 not official yet. Uh, there are some negotiations going on, and afterwards it will still take a bit of time, but. Um, yeah, that's my next project in programming for the two six hundred. Oh, that's that's uh, very exciting and enticing. So everybody, make their bets in the chat <laughs> of what game he is uh, talking about. And by negotiations, I'm guessing it's going to be a port, an official port <laughs> of something. But I'm just guessing here. Um, uh, so that's very very exciting. That's that's excellent. Um, because probably, and that also leads me to believe it's a port of something because of Boulder Dash and the experience of negotiations with First Star software that you may have had. Um, and, uh, you know, the stacks, you're part of that too. So that's uh, very interesting. So we'll see how that develops. So that's, thank you very much for that little uh, tidbit of information. But no problems. Um, you know, we are just hobbyists and everything can go wrong anytime or we lose interest in something. So. You're doing this for fun. Yeah, and you really do have to do it for fun and as a hobby because you, nobody here is getting rich off of <laughs> making 2,600 no. games no. For, for this small group of very dedicated um, fan base and group of people. But um, it, it is just, it is a lot of fun um, and just challenging yourself and, and learning. Exactly. So... Thank, thank, thank you for so much for we finally get to talk to you on the show and it's it's been wonderful and um, hopefully one of these years I'll be able to uh, meet you in person and do a um, a proper interview or maybe even over the internet. Maybe there's a better Wi-Fi work at home. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely with a better Wi-Fi uh, connection. But uh, on our our end, you look yeah, totally fine. Actually, it's, it's one so of the better 
video streams I've seen of, of yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's solid. Good. So you're obviously, your end is sacrificing all of your uh, download for upload. It's pretty yeah, great. It's, it's worked out for well. The, uh, in the so thank you so much I for... Uh, you. Yes. Yes, yeah. It, the, every, all the communication is good and you can hear us and it always falls back on audio. Always. If, if the video is bad, yeah. it always dedicates more bits to the audio. Um, so thank you for, for everything you've done for the community and all the amazing games that you have made and contributed to. And um, thank you so much for, for tuning in as well. Yes, and yeah. thank you for, for your shows. I mean, it's not only this show which helps Stella, I hope, but also the, the other shows where you're promoting homebrewing. That's really cool. I mean, for a developer, it's nice to see that people like your games but it's even much more nicer to see people liking your games and playing them. I wish there would be more videos on YouTube of my games where people really play the games. And this is really, really cool. It's very motivating. <laughs> and yeah, I see it. I see it that way too. I, I yeah. want it, it. It serves many, many purposes. One, it uh, does beta testing. It, we can look for bugs Two. It, it does spur on um, a lot of developers. Yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah, we sure. played we played games on the show that are like seven years old or even older, and they've gone, oh, people have interest in this, and the people are watching and giving them feedback, and they pick up the torch and s finish off their game. And I was like, oh my god, that's so awesome that it, it spurs on more development in the game. And it also shows the game off to all the people out there that may not have heard of it or heard of it but never saw it in action and now they're like oh i want to buy this game from the store or i will want to buy this game when it's out on cartridge so um and i want to make we want to make con contributions back to the community because we're not making these games we're only playing these games so you guys are doing the heavy lifting <coughs> um, but it is all a community effort um, you know, there's people that need to play the games, people that need to promote the games, and people need to make the games. So it's, it's, it is all one kind of really great community that puts it all together. Yes, I, I think I'm doing this for all, yeah, 20 years now. And if it wouldn't be such a great community where people are helping each other and there's no yeah, mobbing or things like this happening, uh, with a few exceptions as always, but it's really a great community and um, thanks to all L for, for example, for Atari age, he keeps the thing alive and even better every time. So there's a lot of people we should not forget and helping. We are, we are a small bunch of people, and but we're sticking together. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks to Al from Atari age and everybody else in the all the developers, all the people who tune into the show, all the people who sell these games and, and make all the contributions. There's people who, who do the programming, who do the artwork, who do the beta testing, who do the sound, like I Sposta. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Everybody is a, it's a big, huge community that comes together, makes it all happen. We all benefit from it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely good to not forget any of these people. So, so thank you so much for um, coming in and chatting with us. It was, it was, it was a great honor for you to, to come in and, and talk with us today. Yeah, thanks. And I enjoyed it. And have a great show. I will be watching one more hour or so before I go to bed. I, oh, I will try. I will try. I don't know what my stream does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He's in, he's in Europe doing a bike tour, so uh, he has to get some rest and and be rested up for the rest of his tour so sounds lovely yeah so thank you very much and we will chat with you soon thank you thomas yench yench oh, i forgot it already yench. Yench. yench okay bye bye yench <laughs> yench <laughs> bye 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 Oh, we're still on mute. Um, so I've never talked with Thomas before, so that was really great. Um, so we're going to play Mappy now, try and get a high score. Let's do it. There uh, were some great um, uh, 
things in the in the in the comments about oh, some of the issues yes. of high scores in relationship to that time machine business. Oh no! Right, because that's an interesting issue that arises. So there's it that. Does. I, I, I appreciated that conversation that was going on. I was like, oh, you have to trust people because some people, you can go for it. Cool. Some people. Um, only post um, just the last screenshot of their high score. Right. And the, um... Oh, God. <laughs> and... Oh, shit. Oh. And, <laughs> and this, uh... The tournament allows you to use an emulator to play it. And the emulator is... The Stella yeah. has the time machine. Right. right. So, if you just post the last screenshot of your score, yeah. nobody knows how you played it. So there's a lot of... It's a lot of honor system that's going yeah. on. So it's it's tough and you just gotta believe people. But a lot of these people that are playing the games, we know them all. Like we know the list of them. You know. Uh <laughs> sort of. You get them in pairs and they're worth more. Yes. You get them if in you get, pairs. If you get and the you same get one them. right after the other one, then you get more. It's like times two and then the next one's times uh, three. There you go. Uh, yep, there's a little bit of leeway when you okay. leap off the shelf there. And if you get them in a certain order, too, there is an order There's to them. There's an order to do this? Okay. Yes. Okay, shit, I'm already at like 4,000. I think I'm gonna... Because... Oh, you got it. What you want to... <laughs> this is the first it. one. What you want to do is get the low numbers first. Just another because... 20 or 25 times. <laughs> <laughs> You're already on the board. The low numbers first. Isn't that ridiculous? How do you know what the... Oh, God. You just have to know. big mistake. Oh, okay. Mistakes were made. <laughs> oh, and you, you can tell which ones. one it is but because it's flashing. Yeah. So you can you tell which one is the same pairs. as the last one you got. Yeah. And you don't want to waste those. Yeah. Wait till cats are there. Because then you'll get them off the screen for a while. I thought there might have been some cats in the way. Is Mappy being auctioned? Um, <laughs> no. It is not being auctioned. Um, this is not one of the options. Oh, oh you died! Whoa. I died! Oh. I was doing my best, oh, though. That was close. At least it gave you the points. Yeah, that's rough. Okay, well, at least some of But I'm Galaga not. is being optioned, auctioned, um, and that's the newest um, Champ Games game. Or coming up. It's not out yet. Oh, he oh, hit himself I, in the head. How am I going to do this? The cats oh, hit themselves on the head when they open doors. Uh, They're very silly. <laughs> I think this is it. I think so. yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's check out the scores here. So only like 22 more times? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the board. I mean... The next one up is 32,000. I think more like 30 more times. Oh god, I'm really bad at this one. No. There you go. Lots of bonus to get here. If you're running out of time, um, just go for the last balloon because it's worth a lot. I'm just going to do that in a sec. Honestly. Yeah. Time is getting down. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it wasn't that close, but good deal. I just there. don't know the song at all. That's the issue I have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Let's bonus see. comes from getting all the balloons, I think. I think so, yeah. Oh. And you can I've get seen, them. I've seen James do it. You can get it, them like, all as long as you don't make so any mistakes. Much. No mistakes. Once you well. make a mistake, you have to move on. Yeah, I think so. And you do want to get that last balloon. If you make one mistake, I think you're allowed maybe see one. See, flashing through that one. Oh, what is happening in our neighborhood? We got some sounds of stuff <laughs> happening. It's cool. Well, next door is like a park. So there's always oh, kids walking point. by. It's nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, just do that. You'll get them. Oh, oh, you got them. Oh, shit. Oh, Whoa, my goodness. Don't go to the second level. Or that one. Yep. Close door. This seems like Close a door. smart... Oh, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I uh, do, but... Way. Oh, oh, yeah, that's too bad. It's the wrong way. It I thought it was going to be the door. greatest thing ever, but instead... Uh, good, good point. I did. I just don't have this, like, I don't have the tactics down yet. Yeah. What you want to really do is close the door on their face. Oh, shit, man. Oh, uh, I think I'm fucked. No, I'm not! No. Okay. It's hard on these levels because they're so wide, you don't know what's coming up. You're actually doing really well. Yeah. Oh, so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Mappy, maybe it's a hard game. It is challenging. You've you've done more than ten percent of what you need to do. Mappy was my first game oh, that I ever played on the show. Yeah. Oh, what it was, a, it was the greatest like leap into the to middle of this thing. Into. Round five. So I, do I have like health? Like what's my? No, it's your last guy. I think. Oh, that was very lucky. <laughs> so do you want to get that? Yeah. For points. And we are going for points. Death. 
Well, 19 isn't terrible. 19 to 80. So if somebody could type that, uh, put A, A, and then 19 to 80. All thanks, Darcy. Yes. So we are playing the standard. Oh, I don't know the order of things. What is it if it flashes? Oh, that's the highest one, is the floppy. So you want to get that one last. Because you want the multiplier as high as possible. Yeah, okay, cool. So when it flashes, it means you grab it? That means... Oh. That's the one you want to grab. Yeah, that's the one Sick. you want to grab to make the matching pair. So that painting is the one that's the jam. Ah. So it's times four. Holy shit, dang. And if you get the next one... That's how you dodge it off. And this yeah, one, another one wait. Times. Oh. See, times five. So each one that you, if you get them in pairs, each Shit. additional pair is worth an additional bonus. Not just, not That's just worth insane. twice as much. It's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. logarithmic. So I he got seventy-two so. fifty on the first round, which was first. not quite double what you got. <laughs> but almost. Yeah, well, I mean, just like roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so okay, so that's insane. So yeah. just as an example, I'm not. I'm not like. Once again, it's cool because like in these games, if you t if you like are going for high score, the yeah, strategy you know, all the is better, yeah. way better than just because because the game I just gets. I should use the door there to get points. Well, it just gets harder the more that. you push to the end, right? That's it is. You want to get the points earlier. It is on the A. Okay. Yeah. So we're all good in there. Oh, I had to do it. Well, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, sometimes you're forced into. Where's the other thing? Did I already get it? Oh my god. Get out of here. I'm gonna do them out of order. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, just, no, no, Paul. It just gets too yeah. Well, you gotta. Oh. At the end of the day, it's like, if you're gonna die, oh. that's far worse than. I'm definitely not an expert at doors, like normal doors, because you can, like. Fend, fend off? Yeah, like, like there's some serious tactics that you oh, can do. Oh, yeah. This guy's gonna come up here? Nope. Ooh, lucky. I'm gonna use this door here. Did I miss him? Why? No, no, I got him. Just took him a while. Or did I? Yay, flashing! But I'm gonna get this door first. Oh, there's lots of them. A waste. A waste! Let me get this first. Dude! Okay, yeah. That's how you, you do go. it. There might be a better way, but Wrecked it's it. definitely faster. Yeah, that's a lot of points, man. And then you get the bonus as well. Five thousand. Right? That's not insignificant. Oh. So you just got ten thousand. Ten thousand. Never that's mind. That's double. That's huge. But the bonus is double what you're. What I already had. <laughs> already bonus points for it. Yeah. Plus those like flashing things. Like it's yeah. There's there's some potential to push some pretty high scores. What's the other thing? Is it like totally opposite end? Oh. Yeah, that's the hard part, right? Because you don't want to... You don't know what's coming, and the, the platforms are, like, super long. You did really well in this level. Maybe because I'm just... Big. Oh, well, I was just trying to survive, so, I like, that's, that's, just, that's a do. really different sort of, like, approach. Um, oh, see? You don't know what's coming. Arga. Are you tired? I don't think I'm gonna... Still did, you still got better better than, than me. Look, I'm tired. I think that you should not <laughs> interfere with James. 
Yes. He's in the zone, buddy. I know well, you want love. I would love. say I'm in the zone, but I need to be in the zone. <laughs> He's in a zone. A zone. <laughs> Whether it is the zone or not. Right here? No. Okay. Whoa. You guys are going this way. Ooh. I'll do this. And then we'll provide safe Smart. passage. Smart. Nailed it. Okay, good. This is where he dies. This is just such a slick game. That's how I feel about Mappy, man. Oh it's God. just very slick. Mm -hmm. Like, it's smooth running, the music is great, like, all the details oh are my totally God, I thought there. I... Damn it. Is that my last life? I think so. Terrible. Darcy, you wanna type it in? J28210. What is it? 28210. Oh, get my name in. See, my high score is 40,000. I can do better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Level 8. How did I do that? Okay. Darcy, you mm -hmm. want to go? You're licking your fingers. No. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, oh, Darcy shit, Kibble. man. I like okay. immediately. Holy shit. That was some good evasion. Oh, oh God. Like, did you see that? Like, it's like, this is just like... Ugh. Onslaught <laughs> within the first like second dodging. Uh, yes, the auctions do go for three days. I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to bid on them, not just during the show, but a little bit after because not everybody can tune in on a Friday. Um, so I want to make sure everybody had the weekend to be able to bid on the items. Wow, that was a lot of crux you just <laughs> you get a bunch, like four. Oh, that's very dangerous Maybe when you break But there's nothing, it. I don't know how to deal with it, you know. You just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. You gotta take a chance and go for it. Alright. When I first played this, I didn't know that there was the doors. So I get 28. Ugh, I didn't even beat. I'm not very good at this game. I'll get better. Because obviously I did better. 40,000. Oh Let's shit! See if I okay, have... that was the perfect time mm -hmm. to win. Yep. I was like, <laughs> you were getting him. So the best way to get all the items is radio, then TV, then oh, computer, oh. then painting. Wow. Okay. I need. I will need help navigating this. Okay. And when I play next, you can get seven thousand points from those items on the screen, if you do them in the right order. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. I think especially early on, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's even if easier. even if it means you have to play it a bunch of times until you get used to it, it's worth it, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's the way to get, get the top score. Ultimately scores. to get the top score, yeah. Yeah, because if you get 7,000 there, plus 10,000 on that bonus round, you're already at 17 two levels. Whoa, where's my guy? <laughs> yeah, oh, that happened to me once too. I'm like, where, where am I? Mm -hmm. That happens to me a lot, and I'm not even playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I can actually like, have a go at this. I haven't like ever done this one properly before. Oh shit, how did I miss it? That sucked. Miss what? So for the people out there who haven't played it, um, oh yeah, I did that wrong. Yep. Oh shit. Because you Rip. see that that trampoline there that mm -hmm. goes down, those two two in a row. You're supposed to just destroy that trampoline and go straight down, mm -hmm. rather than around. Yeah, I did that wrong. So there I'm... is a faster way to do that. So I'll do it then. I'll do that next time. Will that be worth more points? Mm -hmm. Ah, but it's less dangerous. Yeah, you missed the big one. Which is like a huge rip. Yeah. 2,000 points. You get 7,000 loss, right? Yeah. It's 10,000 for total. Mm. Good one. Got it. Oh, I don't know what to do about this there. situation. You gotta just go for it. You just gotta like try not Hope to die. Hope for the best. Because they, they can get off when you get off. There you go, got four cats. 
1200 points. Nice. So there's a lot of points to be had by racking with those like doors. these. Yeah, man. So I think that's what I need to con. Well, yeah, but I I'm also just trying to, like, too. not die, too. <laughs> so, true. Like, as much as I'm, like, also would love to, like, nail high scores, there's also just an important level of, like... Getting past it. Well, yeah, because you can spend forever perfecting this stuff. There you go, last one. You already beat your last score. Yeah. That's awesome. As, as we all should improve. Uh, so we're playing this as part of the, um... Homebrew Tournament. Let me just go back to my notes here. 2019 Homebrew Tournament, round number four. And this is the last game in the Homebrew Tournament of this year. And That's these, cool. And these are all based on the games that won for in the 2018 Atari Oh, Awards, I love it. It's the, so many things that connect, man. Synergy. It's just it's so just much beautiful. synergy. Yeah, so um, Zero Page Homebrew, if you didn't know, hosted the 2018 Atari Awards. Slam that in their faces. I'm still not so good at that side of things. Oh, I need to practice that too. I think there's another one that I gotta get. Yeah, okay, cool. Kicking ass. I didn't pass level 5. Yeah, but you got like <laughs> like 9 times the score. So. Oh, you're catching up. Oh, you should have went up. Still have one life left. Wow. Um, and I am in the lead in the homebrew tournament. Are you? Yes, Holy I am. shit, dude. Maybe not after this. <laughs> well, we'll see. We we'll got see. some stuff to do still. Yep. There you go. Oh, oh, you got him. That's the big guy. What's his name? Goro? See, as much as I'm like, I lo I'm like, would love to be more strategic, yeah. there is also just this level of like, don't die. The same user has high bid on all of the items. Oh, Somebody's got some deep pockets oh. <laughs> to get all the items. James! <gasps> oh my god, oh my kicking god. ass. Jesus Christ, okay, so at least I'm, what is it, sting before? Okay, so I got a bonus, yep. okay. <sighs> Whew. Okay, come on. Okay, go up, uh, and press to the right. To oh the right. shit, oh. sorry. Okay. Rip, right? Because what you want to do is um, burst through that um, trampoline and just fall straight down. Oh, that's great. Okay, so... Don't bother on this one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I would just keep going. Yeah. I mean, it's too bad that I lost the bonus, but like... I think you can do it. I'm gonna just, I'm just do it. I'm just doing gonna it. Gonna go for it? Oh, okay. Just cause like I, I that's worth a fair amount, and I knew that I'd already like lost, and so at the very least that's like a decent like mm -hmm. four thousand points, which is like better than nothing. Yeah. I mean, four six hundred. Who, would, who wouldn't love to have ten thousand points? But mm -hmm. see, now I'm on round eight, so like I'm doing Taking fairly hands. well. Ooh, <laughs> just that's it. instant rip. <laughs> can you do? Thirty six six ninety. That's cool. really good. What is that? Up 36. That puts you above the last two 90. people. What's that? A36690K. Yep. Great. And I think you get to put your name in the score. Hey! Fuck yeah! And you're, and you're not. What are you? What are you going to put? A. Just like A E R. Oh, thanks for doing it. Oh my god. Oh no! Mmm! See, this is where having a name like Max would be dope. Or Kai, my sister's name is Kai, K-A-I. So, so you can fit it all yeah, in Yeah, the whole thing goes over Amy. I had a girlfriend named Amy, and she would never... And why? Anytime that we would play games, and she would get a high school, she'd be like, I love the name oh, Amy. Oh, I needed um, help. Oh, shit, what's your... Um, I'm just going to die, so, okay. um, so we can get that um, up. Okay. 30 points. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's terrible. That's the order I need. Radio, TV, computer. Okay. I'm just going to die, though. That's how you burst through um, a trampoline. Just it's by on the bonus the level? Yeah, you just go boom, 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 and it's really quick. That's the way to do it. Cool. 
Not doing that at first. No, no. <laughs> Do they repair? Uh, yes, when you hop off of them. They repair. Okay, so radio. I think. Well, you die. Though. Maybe they don't repair. Because there are um, trampolines on... It's probably that first level. Maybe that first one is a little bit different. Okay, what is the first one? Uh, radio. Okay. That's the radio. And TV is next. Yeah, both radios first. Ah! See how I have one arm that's uh, bigger than the other? Yeah. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> You've been uh, working out. Oh, don't get that one. Oh, there's the radio. Okay, and then TV? Yeah. Okay. And then what? And then a uh, computer. Okay. I mean, this is the thing. When in, you die. In theory, this is better. <sighs> but yes. on another level, you know, there is there's something to be said about. In just the now, pushing. it's not better. In the. But in the long term, it's better because right. you learn to how to do yeah. it and it's how like, not to do it. It's and, like um, I, I oh, teach. Oh, wrecked it. Hmm. It did heal. Is it flashing? It no, did but, heal. The but the computer's not flashing as if it's the second item. Yeah, because yeah. you I died. <laughs> yes. Don't feel so hard done by, you died. Oh no. Nothing. I, feel I was done by. I, in like my night class that I teach film, I teach like editing all the time. <laughs> and I not feel like off. I'm always telling people like, learn the hotkeys and like, you know, use Terrible. a mouse, not your trackpad. And they're like, no, but it's easier for me. No. Just it's like, well, no, in the long term, if you get in these, it's like also like piano players who play like with really weird fingerings. It's like, well, if you learn how to do it properly, you're going to be amazing. It might suck right now, but. Yes. There we go. Radio, TV, computer. Oh, radio's up there. I would, I would love, love, love to watch like what the hundred thousand dollar game looked like. Sorry, hundred thousand point okay. game looked like. Just to learn from. I saw oh, something yeah, I love I doing is like watching speed runs of games because you can learn so much about like how to just how to play the game based off of the speedrunners. So oh the yeah, I do that sometimes too. Yeah, bottom TV, I think. Yeah. Oh, hiding. Oh, oh it's no. tough. They sort of switch from flashing. And you can get him when he's hiding. Yeah, you get bonus points. And then his computer. Oh shit. Let it go to sleep. Ooh, yeah, I'm a sorry. Bit faster. Damn it. Oh. It is a long, arduous kind of <laughs> procedure. Then, then oh. it's going to be painting after this, and then it's going to be like hard drive. Yeah, luckily I remembered, even though I put the thing to sleep. Yeah, I used the use door. Ah. Ah, uh, yes. And sorry, which one? Painting? Painting. And now computer. Sorry, now, um, uh, whatever this, this one is. Floppy. Or a safe? Yeah. Is it a safe or a floppy? Oh god, there's a time limit. Ooh. Holy shit, man. I don't know if that's even... Yeah, it's like, is this... Now I can't use the doors, because... Oh, I should have used the doors. You gotta use. You gotta do a bunch of stuff. At yeah, once. you gotta hit all the mechanics. If like you I can. got a lot of bonus points, but okay, radio, TV, computer. I didn't see that getting them in that order helped. Like eighty-eight, twenty. Like that's not. Well, that's the not last, but the last oh, one was like the last one was six times five, right? So you had five hundred times six. I mean, so what is that? He made like three thousand points just for the last one. Yeah, but he was only for all that effort. He was only a thousand points. More, which is not only, but yeah. like, yeah, it's not it's, it is a part of the equation to to figure out whether it's worth it. Because yeah. you were literally, but it was so I much think it was one thousand and eighty points I... ahead of the first time. Am I on computer? So what you're at, and then painting. Oh, I closed the door myself. I don't know if this is worth it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's so, tricky, right? Because I'm like trying to do things and I'm messing up. See, my technique was just try not to die and get collect all the things. But that's it's yeah. just back to the same thing, James. It's like uh, it's like you're learning. Mm -hmm. Radio, TV, computer. If you're trying to win in this game, then, then no, it isn't the right way to do it. Yeah, you're right. It's like. You know, how big picture do you think? Yeah. 
And this is where, with these high score games, right, that's where people have insane advantages. Oh, it's because I reset. Because I died. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's not, that's supposed to be higher. I'm gonna use that door. I would love to see, like, a mappy world record or something. What that would look like. Be oh, so I didn't get any of them. I just... Ah! You got some of them, but they were just more. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Only 10 hours, 12 minutes to go. <laughs> Woo! Good to have those updates. <laughs> Mappy Arcade Game was one of the first to have a lot of background music. Arcade games previous year were lucky to have music at all. This one does have a lot. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Wizard I Esposta did the music yeah. for, for Michael this, which is amazing. So that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that same man again over there. And this is a significant bonus, man. If you can nail this shit. Like oh, but 10, you can't 000. do it. Damn oh, it! Oh. It's good I got that extra time. Oh, you can do it there. Wow. You can. There's enough ledge. I just get so stressed out when this level happens, it's hard for me to even think. I'm just like, oh! It's good I did the both shortcuts because I messed up once. Yeah. <gasps> oh, last Snaked second! Snaked in, man. Some this notes. is like an 80s you movie. Note. You, can't me you can mess up once if you do all the shortcuts. That was very lucky. John Shampoo has joined us in the chat. Welcome, John. Yo. And he is... I think he's next up on the... On the, the meeting. On the meetings, on the chat. I don't know if I should do this. I'm just going to go for it. This is That's pretty, Well, I think it's smart for the first, like, two levels, for yeah. sure. But the game just definitely gets to a point where you have to... It's like, nah. It's still worth trying to get pairs. Just it is, maybe yeah. try, don't try to there. get. Uh, I mean, staying alive is more important than getting pairs, perhaps. But uh, it might not be. It depends. It's it's probably more important. Pairs if you can. Like depends on how slow getting points is later on. Oh, <laughs> you can go up there. That's yeah. smart, man. That's one of the ways to do it. It is a long trek, though, going up there. Yeah, perfect like timing. The top. Yeah, see, this is like where you're getting that bonus. This is like really sets you up for mm -hmm. success, because now you're... And that's another thing to think about, too, man, because if you can get the bonus, it's like 10k, and like, that's worth way more. And so if you can push farther, the more bonus levels you can get to, you're definitely going to have a better score. Because mm -hmm. that's probably the easiest, most you know, like, consistent way to sort of nail scores. That's actually a fairly good one, too. The doors? If you can knock out a bunch of them at once. You get, you get a bunch of points for that, yeah. And it, and it gets rid of them for a while, too. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's like, it's definitely like a couple birds with one stone kind of deal. Okay, come on, a whole bunch of guys. That's what I want. Oh, but it, you died. Did cause, I? Because the guy was yeah. coming... What? Because they were they were zoning. Which guy? That guy that's yeah. five feet away from me? Oh well, but he kind of he collided with you right mm -hmm. when you pushed the door, which pushed you back. Yes. <laughs> which sucks. Much BS. Can you get through that one door that was like right on the edge, from the trampoline side? Yeah, you should be able to. Like it has a little ledge to jump onto. You like should be able to. Ledge. See, there's no ledge. You might be able to get there, but there's no visible ledge. Oh, that door! Mm -hmm. Can't open it. Right? Can't do anything. Ah, uh, uh, rip! If I was an expert player, I could use that door to smack that guy that was coming to, from the left, and then proceed to the left. But you're not an expert player. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> because I didn't do that. <laughs> oh! What do you do when he's on top of you? This is where this game gets just rippy sometimes. Thirty-five, seven, forty. Better than last time, which is good. Okay, my Ooh. turn. Yep. It's almost time for um, Mr. Shampoo. Almost time. Hold on, I can use the bathroom. Which okay. is perfect time. Oh, I have to put my name in. 
Not that it's going to get knocked out. It's going to get knocked out pretty quick. I mean, in anyway. a second, I'll be knocking it out. That's right. Oh, Z Z E R. That's close, huh? <laughs> Zero. Sure. Right? So up next we have John Shampoo. No, that's not my V. Uh, and uh, no, his games that he has made is a lot. Uh, some heavy hitters here: um, Avalanche, Work in Progress, uh, Champ Sports Hockey, which is coming up. There have been screenshots, ah. so I can mention that one. Conquest of Mars, Elevator Action, no. Work in Progress, Galaga. Ladybug, Mappy, that we're playing, Ripoff, Work in Progress, Scramble, Super Cobra Arcade, Wizard of War Arcade, uh, Zookeeper, Work in Progress. And his game, uh, his newest game, Galaga, is going to be released on October 19th, 2019 at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. That is the, the hope, if everything uh, falls into place. And uh, we will be playing... Draconian next after this. Trying to beat my world record. I don't know if we have time for world records. It takes a long time to get a world record on that game, that's for sure. Galaga's doing awesome. Uh, $305. Yeah, let's take a look at, um, at eBay and see what is happening here. Now that we have a little bit of time that I'm not playing. And uh, we've given you all the hints you need. <laughs> there, you got a cat. So, let's see. Stuff selling. Active. Okay, Astronomer is up to $26. These are all Canadian prices, so translate them to your local currency. Halo 2600 is up to $73. That's amazing. Gold Rush is $102.50. Unbelievable. Galaga. Oh my god. 305 Canadian. That is really high. Really, really high. Um, Stay Frosty 2, $73. Wow, that's incredible. Medieval Mayhem, $14.50. Stella's Stocking, $34. Retron, $77. Is leading the pack, I think, so far. Uh, $355 for the Retron 77 console. That is incredible. Uh, with 59 bids. Wow. Um, Draconian, which we'll be playing next, $47. Uh, Space Rocks. You can get it for a deal. For a dollar right now. Oh my god. Oh, it's not just the first what? time, it's the whole game. Uh, was that the last one? It was the last one! <laughs> Barely didn't get it. Like one pixel away, I think. I don't even know how they got onto the shelf quick enough to murder me. <laughs> Some murder cats. Murder it was cats. close enough that it that it disappeared from the screen. Uh, it could have been the flicker management. Because there's multiple things on the line. There's you, the cats. Kick up the right. Oh, you have to break through. You have to use my technique of breaking through. Oh, no. Used in the wrong spot. Atari uh, 2600 Homebrew Companion Volume 1 and 2 books, $20. And Space Rock's poster is a deal at a dollar still. So, wow, that is a lot of great bids people have put in. Dan ABC, back in time for Mappy. Just going for it. Just going for it. This is well, the best I, screwed up too, I screwed up too many times, so uh, I, had to skip, I had to skip balloons. Very smart. So now we're going to be talking with John Champo. Um, so I'm going to get that set up right now. And get it ready to switch over. And he is using that. Oh, it's like I don't know how to play or something. <laughs> <You're just laughs> I totally forgot how to oh, play. Oh, they all disappear when you die. Never mind. John is responding, so we'll be switching away from the game after you die. Oh, oh. so that's now. <laughs> and the time <laughs> is now, so you can put in your score. Uh, 19,550. 19, that is 
pretty good for a first. Have you ever played this game before? Yeah. You played this? Uh, yes. Okay. Once. That makes sense. One time before. That's pretty good for your second game. I, I mean, I we, we played it before. I played it a couple times or something. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. So, yes, John, we're going to go for it now. Um, I should put their picture on here. Yes. What do you think? Yes, because then we don't uh, have to look over. Then we didn't, they're not looking. We're not looking this way. I don't know if John is going to be going. Uh, <laughs> he is calling. So let's get that going right now. Hello, John, are you there? Hey, James, how's it going? Yes, this is John. Excellent. So we're going to kind of be doing it um, CB style. Um, so I'll be talking and then I'll be muting myself and it'll go to you. So it won't be like quick back and forth because of the echo that comes in because you get picked up by the microphone in here. The echo echo? echo. The echo echo echo, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I think I read off your credentials here. Very impressive. Um, Very already, impressive. all the games that you've done. And um, so, let's talk a little bit about um, Stella and your use of it, or, or misuse of it, and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. how it helps you out in a day-to-day -day kind of thing when you're uh, developing games, because that is the topic of the day, is Stella, at the Stella film. Yep, no, absolutely. No, Stella is, uh, I'm not even sure when I actually found Stella. I think uh, the first um, emulator I was using, was, I think Z26, I may be dating myself here, um, back in the early, uh, late 90s, 90, 1999, 2000 realm. Um, but switch over to Stella probably in like uh, the early 2000s. Um, that's when I started developing. So um, certainly it's been a tool that, you know, that has been monumental in uh, helping me uh, not only, uh, you know, just get demos together, learn how to program to, to start with, but, you know, get these games together and uh, also enjoy other people's games as well. Um, so it's uh, you know, the work that Steven and Tom and I don't know what the guy's real name is, Dirty Harry, but, um, you know, and all the all the people that have worked on, on Stella, you know, and uh, I owe them a, certainly a large debt of gratitude for, for all the hard work they do. So uh, um, Stella is, is amazing, you know, and every year it just gets better and better, you know, so the emulation is, you know, they're always striving for perfection, which is, uh, you know, certainly helps not only from a playability standpoint, but certainly from a development standpoint as well. So, <clears throat> Very so um, have you been able to like work with them closely? Uh, I'm sure you you talk back and forth with them while um, developing your games. If you find something, it's like not quite working in Stella, but works in um, on, on an actual console. Because I know with a lot of your games, you push the envelope quite far with um and especially with with arm development as well you're you're on the forefront of developing with arm and you know stella when it first started out and i mean i'm, I'm sure it didn't have any arm it had like D, D, dpc uh, as its basics um as far as it went yep absolutely yeah i mean think uh i don't even know when they added dpc um support in there but yeah as far as uh um, collaborating with, uh, you know, Stephen directly, you know, I've, I've had numerous just one-on-one -on -one conversations resolving issues that I've seen, and he's been very, very quick with his turnaround time. Um, and specifically with, um, you know, um, working with Daryl, Daryl has done a lot of work uh, with um, um, Stella as well. Uh, he was uh, very helpful uh, with the port of um, putting in the bus support when I was working on elevator action. I know uh, it's one of those things where he introduced it to me and then I couldn't debug it. So uh, he, he's very quick with his turnaround time. So it was like, a, um, you know, it's, I've only had to wait probably a couple of days when I found an issue to uh, have it resolved. So these guys are really on top of it and they certainly earn, you know, earn all the praise that, that they get. Um, as far as uh, Galaga is concerned, um, that's using, you know, that was really using bleeding edge technology, the CDFJ uh, development. Um, yeah, I was, was going to talk to you about that because um, 
they release specifically a new version of Stella to coincide with the Galaga demo release because it was not able to play Galaga with Stella before that release, only like the, the beta version. So you worked in conjunction with them so that everybody would be able to play Stella when the demo came out. Yep. Or play yep. Galaga when the demo Exactly, yep. Um, certainly when we were developing it, um, uh, TJ and, and again, I wish we would, does anyone know what Dirty Harry's real name is? Because I feel a little weird. I've, ne I've never heard it. Um, he, he but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll just call him DH for short. Um, but uh, yeah, those guys, um, once I came up with the idea, again, it was a selfish idea for me. A CDFJ is basically, you know, it's just a CDF um, um, driver that, uh, you know, Chris, Daryl and Fred put together. Um, that really carries most of the uh, um, um, extra features that, that are needed for Galaga. The J part was just something I came up with, which I needed. It's, it really doesn't add um, any uh, functionality that um, makes the games any better. It was really just to uh, allow me to free up more ROM um, by using a different, I don't want to get too technical, but it's basically just allows you to two, uh, use a different jump streams um, which is uh, very useful when you want to reuse code. Um, so, this, so was it a coincidence that it was it was jump and yes. John? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep saying jump, but uh, you know, Daryl and and the guys say no, it's John. So okay, I'll I'll, I'll take that one. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, they were very quick um, to give me um, the uh, Windows support of it, um, and also the actual implementation in the Stella Core. Um, then they came out, I think, with the Linux support, which was very helpful for, um, I think, not, uh, I mean, Mac support, which was, uh, I don't know if that's different, to be honest with you, um, for, uh, for Nathan, because he was testing it for me as well and doing all the uh, um, work with the, uh, the graphics. And also for um, Ross um, Keenum, who did the sounds, he needed a beta build for, um, so he could hear what it sounds uh, sound like in, in the game. So. Um, but anyway, I did work with Steven, as you mentioned, like a couple of days before we're going to release. I know, uh, you know, we put out that big reveal on zero page uh, homebrew in, in the middle of May. And then uh, people were getting itchy for a, a demo. Um, so while we were squashing some bugs, um, Steve, Steven reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be releasing this on Friday if, uh, or Thursday if you want to release your game. And that's why we decided to release it on that on that Friday, which I forgot what day it was, but. Anyway, so yeah, so they, they, they've been great. The communication's awesome, uh, the turnaround time. And, you know, like I said, without Stella, you know, I, I have a pretty good idea how it was for the developers back in the 80s. And certainly, uh, you know, being able to develop Galaga. And, you know, we had that, it was six weeks of development from the time we started from bare bones, nothing to what we showed on your, your, your show. And certainly having Stella in a rapid uh, development environment, it's, played a huge part in that so um thought that could have been six six months you know who knows um maybe, maybe even longer because i'm sure at some point you just get frustrated you know with the turnaround time between an idea and, and seeing it um, implemented so uh, having that instant satisfaction and being able to see the results certainly speeds up everything so yeah and and i guess you would have had to have a direct connection from the computer to a cartridge uh, it without Stella and be able and would have to test it on actual hardware um, every single time rather than being able to develop it directly <clears throat> on the computer itself through emulation. Exactly. Actually, my first um, you know first uh, pass at developing um, Galaga, all the testing was done. You know, I had to upload it to Harmony to go see my changes. So, but that was just when I was putting together the uh, initial kernels that were. Basically, well, you know, and again, I have to thank Stella for this because I basically just, I don't know if I should be saying this, but I stole the code from <laughs> Galaxian. You know, I just uh, put the Gal Galaxian bin in there and I stepped through it and I went, ah, oh, that's how they do it. You know, you know, doing their um, um, re repositioning the players and uh, changing the, the copies of each player on the scan line. Um, obviously, Stella was, uh, without Stella, I would have never been able to figure that out. Um, so that kind of gave me the idea of, uh, well, I'm going to use this, and I converted it to a uh, um, CDFJ, as it ended up turning out to be. Um, so, so Stella is not only good for development, it's also very helpful for me to 
um, looking at how the pioneers did it. You know, this was what was done in collection was done in 1983. So uh, this was, uh, and I think it's pretty amazing what they were able to do back then um, with the limited development tools they had. But certainly Stella just takes the, uh, you know, lets you peek behind the curtain and see what all the tricks were. So uh, um, that, that was the birth of uh, Galaga. So uh, um, we have to think. Yeah, that, 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 it, that. it makes sense that you would, you would, uh transition it from Galaxian because I mean Galaga is a sequel to Galaxian anyway so it, it's not even uh, and, and somebody and Carl G says in the chat that's that's not stealing that's reverse engineering yeah exactly that, that's, that's a nice way to say it because yeah, yeah again we used uh, you know I could see how they were doing it and then certainly we had to expand upon it to get all the features in of Galaga in there but that was you know, I think a lot of people shied away from doing Galaga or thought it was not impossible, but would be very difficult because of all the flicker. Um, but once I went through Galactine and said, hey, they're doing the all the people, all the enemies in formation using one sprite. I said, well, you know, and then you have another sprite to have everything flying in. Um, you know, let, let's see how that's going to look. Um, and as we see, you know, um, I know there's a lot of debate going on, like, Galaga cannot be done without the arm, but um, um, in this particular instance, it's really just Galaxian Plus, in, in my opinion. I mean, what, what I am doing, you know, is certainly is helped by the arm, but uh, what um, what you see on the screen, like how it's rendering, you know, that's that's just plain old Galaxian. That's all it is, just Galaxian code with a little more features in it. So I'm um, certainly using the arm and DPC Plus and um, having you know, more time in the kernel allows us to put in the bells and whistles. That's why you get like the nice star field now. You couldn't do that before. You also get things like the overlay text. I don't know if people notice, but in Galaxian, I mean, in Galaga, the entire screen is used for playing. So things are flying over the score, they're flying over your reserve ships. You have the text that things are flying in and under, you know, certainly uh, that, that would be impossible without the arm. So uh, that's, that's the additional uh, bells and whistles. Sorry, I kind of got a little off track there, but anyway, that's kind of what that. Uh... Oh yeah, no, no problem. And and uh, I noticed that you posted in the the forums, I think, yesterday or today, that you're expected to release it on October nineteenth at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, if everything goes according to plan. Yep, that is correct. I talked to um, yeah, Al made the decision that Atari Age will be attending. Um, so yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Um, so my brother and I have already um, booked our tickets. So we're going there and actually uh, um, we're going to be releasing Wizard of War Arcade there as well. Um, that was originally supposed to be released in the spring, um, but was delayed due to you know numerous things. Um, one of them being just Al didn't have the time also to release. He's basically not going to, my understanding is he's not going to be releasing any games until the Portland Game Expo because of, the forum upgrade and some other uh, things that um, held them back. So a lot of uh, games are going to be pushed off to be uh, all released at the same time. So, um, yeah. So everybody get your wallets ready. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Gonna be, it's going to be a, a, bu a bunch of games available. I'm sure on, on that day. So a lot of heavy hitters there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I, I should probably note that um, one thing that did come out is that, we will not be able to call the game Galaga. Um, I know that's probably going to disappoint some people, but you know it's going to come out eventually. Um, Al basically, uh, um, due to some issues that he's having, um, decided that it wasn't worth the risk. So um, still trying to decide on a name. It's most likely going to be called Galagon, which was the name of the PC clone that I did back in 1997, which coincidentally I referenced a lot of the code while I was doing this port. So um, even though it's not going to be called Galaga, it's uh, it's going to be named after its father. So <laughs> it's going to be a junior. That's beautiful. I like that a lot. That's yeah. very yeah. cool. Yeah. And and it's and it's fine. Like the underlying code, it's all the same. It's just going to have a little different title screen and an, and a different uh, title on the box. But it's a, it's going to be the same same code, the same game, the same play. Yep, exactly. We don't, you know, unless I hear otherwise, you know, we don't, that's the only thing I, you know, I shouldn't say I'm going to change them. Nathan will end up changing it. I know he's on this call. So, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, 
he, it was funny. He actually, were, we were tossing around some names and uh, we were thinking that uh, he um, sent me a joke. Uh, um, at least I hope it was a joke. It was uh, um, uh, the uh, logo of uh, Galagon, but he did it in the font of Gilligan. You know, if, if anyone remembers Gilligan's Island. So I was like, when I first saw it, I went, that, that's terrible. What is wrong with him? Um, and then it, then it hit me because he said, uh, sit right back and you'll hear a tale. And I went, wait, that's the font of the Gilligan's Island, uh, um, you know, marquee. So that's, uh, so hopefully that's not his final decision, but I, I know he's on your show, so you can uh, ask him directly. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll make sure it's not in that terrible, terrible font. I'm not sure if it has a name. I'm sure it's specifically for that show because they didn't really have every, every font back then was hand done. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it was, it's pretty humorous anyway. It may, may, may make a good Easter egg. That's for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you want to get into some of the other stuff that we discussed before do you want to keep it uh, light no this is fine no, no this, this is, is good so um um yeah so there was there was a big discussion in the uh in the forums about arm programming mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. in its impact on uh 2600 homebrew community i, I always love this these debates on the, in these small communities um, <laughs> it's quite interesting, um, but uh, there there was people, not too many people, saying that they don't like ARM, but they were they were d discussing how what its impact of of the game because when Galaga came out, it just it realistically blew everyone away uh, in terms of what could be now done in terms of that type of gameplay on the system right and right. and there there were things like uh it 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 raises the bar of what people's expectations let's say of what uh a 2600 game is and some people were like oh now not not many like very few dissenters uh, i would say like one or two saying that you know maybe people who are developing 2K, 4K games without the ARM processor or any, any extra chips or RAM will look bad in comparison or something like that. Or why even bother making the games now if, if we're not going to be making the best of the best games? Of course, we had a massive discussion on the show about that. Right. And right. we were like, no, of course, every game is absolutely different. Every game has different gameplay. And it's, and it's, we, uh, two of us here are filmmakers um, and just because you know Scorsese releases a film or you know you look at any of the masters of film you don't give up making making films because a, somebody made a great film it should inspire you to to make you know make your own films and and put your stuff out there it's like oh look what other people can do how successful they can they can make games and what and, is your motivation like yeah. what's your reason for making it if your reason is to get uh people to play it and if the people won't play it because it doesn't have an arm chip then that could be the case but if but if your motivation is something else or if people are still interested in it then it makes that argument and, and my thing is we're in the era of modern games, so it's not like we don't have things <laughs> yeah. like... I was like, we could just load up The Witcher 3, and obviously that's going to blow everything out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we're part of this community because we're like, oh, I wish we had amazing graphics. I mean... Yeah, it's, it's... Why is the Atari version of Witcher 3 so <laughs> low res? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can barely tell that there's two swords we need to fix this <laughs> so so it'll be interesting to hear what what your your thoughts on on this being the the person who put out galaga can you and, put and started his picture it. on this screen like you were discussing I, even it, though i'll do no it for picture? next time okay. i'll do it for next time yeah okay well um yeah thanks james thanks for saying all that too um i'm, I'm glad you brought that up well, actually, I knew you were going to bring it up because I talked to you beforehand. So I'll, I'll pretend that it was, it's coming out of left field. Oh, okay, James. Um, let me see. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah. I would say probably, um, what's the best way to talk about this? So, well, first and foremost, probably the thing, um, I was a little taken back by some of the comments and maybe I shouldn't take it so personal, but, you know, being the only guy that's actually doing arm development, I mean, it's not like I, you know, this whole uh, um, vast, you know, collection of people that, you know, this is being directed towards. It's basically directed towards myself and 
and Daryl whenever Daryl, you know, gets back into uh, developing as well. So that's probably why I took a little personal. And it wasn't like personal, like, oh, my God, you know, these guys are upset with me. It was more like the thing that hit me that I probably didn't realize is that, you know, it was turning other people off you know, and talented developers to, to make games. And that's certainly nothing I want to be a part of. I don't want to be the guy that, you know, changes the landscape of uh, 2600 development for the worst. And I, I don't think I am. I'm not, I'm not trying to blow us out of the water or blow it out of proportion, but just hearing that kind of hit home and it kind of just left a sour taste in my mouth because, you know, the, I tried to explain it on a couple of my forum posts where, you know, I, I've done the 4k thing, you know, I, you know, it's, I, I guess that's just the type of developer, you know, I am and what, what motivates me as, as we know, this is not a full-time job. Champ Games is not this huge corporation that's looking out, you know, out to squash the little guy, you know, with their technology, you know, it's like, this is open technology that anyone can use. Um, but even with, with that said, it's just, that's what motiv motivates me to develop. So um, having these extra tools um, and, being bleeding edge and bus stuffing. And it's like Daryl showed me a bus stuffing demo and said, this is what you can do. You know, I didn't shy away from it and say, well, that's cheating. I'm not going to do it. And I mean, within a couple of weeks, that's what inspires me. I, I went, okay, I want to learn how to do this. Daryl, can you help me uh, get up and running? Let's get Stella working. I want to be able to test this. You know, and then I started um, elevator action, you know, and that's, that's just what drives me um, to, to make these games to begin with. So um, I guess, you know, not that it's a wish, but, you know, I, I just, it would be nice if people could, could see it from that angle that, you know, when I'm not developing and I'm playing Atari games, I'm not, this is the God's honest truth. I play Dodgem. I play Super Breakout. Those are the games that I love. Those are the ones I grew up on. Those are 2K games with nothing, you know, and this cuts are fun. That's it. Um, you know. Yeah, it comes I, back I, to gameplay I, at that point. It's like, yeah. what? Exactly. You, you can make yeah, an amazing, yeah. amazing 2K game that'll blow a, a, a CDF game out of the water because people keep coming back to it over and over again. And a good example that I think I gave was Amoeba Jump. It's a 4K game. Its playability is through the roof. Like, I think we played that yeah, game more my, than any other game. It's in my top 10 homebrews of all time, for sure. Yeah, and, and so it's it comes back to gameplay uh, mostly because it can look as good as you want. It can have the best music. It can have the best graphics. But if it doesn't play well, it nobody's gonna come back to it. And and it's all and it's really comes back to, you know, the ideas in your head and how you implement those ideas uh, through programming. And it doesn't matter if it's. Uh, you know, a 32, 64, 512K game or yeah. a 2K game. Exactly. And yeah, and the, you know, the, the arm is obviously extremely helpful. And, you know, I, I made this, put it in a post before, is that, you know, I have very little limited time to, to this development. And it seems like I'm, I think people have the impression that I'm working around the clock, you know, seven days a week, pumping out four or five games. It's just, you know, when I have a little bit of time, you know, I like to be able to uh, make these games. And when, we can all blame Daryl, I guess, because he's the one that <laughs> introduced all this stuff to me. You know, I remember just always being frustrated and not having enough time and always being stressed out when I was doing assembly development. You know, I think other people can, can, uh, that do that, um, type of development can, uh, um, I don't know, I, I guess see, see my point because it is very stressful it is, um, it's very, very, not that it's difficult. I mean, it's very difficult. And just like an ARM development is very difficult as well. It's just, it's, just, it's, it's on yeah, a different... Gonna bring that, I was, was going to bring that it, up. Some people saying that it's it's easier. It's so much easier. It's cheating. It's simple to do these games now with, with ARM. It's like, it's still programming. It, you have to do every single line of code. It's not like anything's built in. It's not drop-in graphics or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean... I mean, one of the advantages I have is that, you know, since you do have the arm, I mean, you have a little bit more, not a little bit more, you have uh, more processing time. So you can be, you, you can just do more. And the way I, it's the, the way I saw it is that it just raised, it raised the bar. Like the first uh, DPC plus game I did was scramble, you know, so you can see what scramble would have looked like without DPC. It would have been super Cobra that was released by Park Brothers. And I'm not putting it down. I'm saying, that was the limit. 
and I think they did a good job considering the, the limit they had. My limit was much higher. And what we tried to strive for, like Nathan and myself and Ross and Mike, you know, we look at, okay, what's the, what's the limit we can hit with this? We're not being lazy at all. If anything, it's more like the pressure's on, you know, if I released Galaga and it, you know, didn't look like the way it did, you know, people could have been disappointed. They'd be like, well, oh, you got an arm processor and that's the best you can do. It's like, uh, no, it really sets the bar. And, you know, we are very creative and what we do is like, we just say, it's just like someone gave you another tool set and said, Hey, you can build this house and now you have a saw and now you have, you know, an electric gun. And now we expect you to build it faster. You expect you to build it stronger. You expect it to be, you know, all your expectations go up and then your mind starts, you know, again, part of this is just becomes much more creative for me because now I can, you know, it just opens up a whole new toolkit of, uh, of things that we can do. And, you know, coming up with the unique things that we can do now to make Gallagher look like the way it does and play the way it does and putting the overlay text on it and, you know, just all those things. We, every little thing that you see in Gallagher, you know, Nathan and I and Ross, we sit down, we talked about it and, you know, we, you know, we came up with a unique way to have it be better than it could have been without, without the arm. So, um, so what you have, so we're just not using the arm to just be lazy and, and, you know, uh, it, it's it's really I, I, i'll tell you a quick story last year at a prge um you know we sh we had mappy there and some of the old timers uh, were there dave crane you know dan and gary kitchen and i was showing them mappy and you know it wasn't they were looking at it with a almost like a jealous look in their eyes but it wasn't a jealous like you're better than me it was more like god i wish we had that you know and dave Crane actually said something out along the lines. You could see his mind going like, wow, it's like, this is, this is what would have, would have happened, you know, if we were stuck with DPC, you know, and we kept going, going. you know, yeah, I, David Crane is I, the perfect person to reference in that situation because he is the per the person who put the extra chip into pitfall too. Yeah, exactly. And, and a lot of the extra graphics we see are based off that, you know, the arm helps very, helps a lot in the sense that, you know, um, Andrew Davey had actually mentioned this about like Boulder Dash, where you know, having those limited cycles in between frames means, you know, you have to spread a lot of game logic over multiple frames, which could cause the game not to be as smooth. And, you know, but you can still, like, I had to do the same thing with Ladybug, um, where, you know, you have such a limited time. But since the arm gives you more time, um, you know, that allows just the game to be a little bit smoother, but, you know, from a graphics standpoint, the DPC enhancement that allows you to update TIA, TIA registers much faster is really what brings, makes um, Gallica look the way it does. And as far as how it sounds is it's using TIA sound. So there's no, you know, there's nothing, you know, it's basically the sounds that Ross had done for, you know, a, with, without using the arm at all. So, Anyway, so that's uh, those are my thoughts on that. You know, I just uh, I just didn't want to be the guy that was, you know, pulling people back. And I don't want people, you know, I don't see this as a competitive arena. You know, it's like I love a ton of games that are being released uh, for uh, whether they're arm or not. You know, um, so I hope people that can just sit back and just enjoy what we do and. Uh, and, uh, you know, from a development standpoint, if that's not your, you know, if you don't want to get into arm development, then that's fine. I'm, I don't blame you. You know, it's not easy. And, and it's a different way to think of things. And some people want to develop for the Atari in the way that would have been done in the 80s. Um, I wanted to do that too at one point. That's what, and I did do it, you know. Ladybug and Conquest of Mars are just plain 16K games, no extra RAM. Those could have been developed and released as is in the 80s and you know um anyway i from from my standpoint <clears throat> having something like the uh the arm just renewed my interest in development and uh you know super cobra mappy scramble um wizard of war actually wizard of war i probably didn't need the arm that one i probably went and being a little lazy with but <laughs> <laughs> um but the other one's like it's funny it's like it's funny that galaga is the one that you know people looked at him and oh my god i can't believe this without the arm it's impossible you know, that's, that's the one that's probably the one that you could do the best without the arm. You know, I would expect people to come out and, you know, burn me at the stake for a scramble and mappy because those, 
those I see as being almost impossible to do um, with, you know, that level of quality w w without the arm because of the scrolling and, you know, the multiple changes per line and um, with colors and things like that. But that's, those are really pushing it. Galaga was quick to do it because it really, I mean, I'm not trying to say it was simple, but, you know, from a stamp, from the standpoint of uh, um, developing it with the kernels and stuff like that, it was much easier infinitely easier than Mappy and, and Scramble and, and those other games. So, Well, you also had, you had the base code for it as well because you had already developed <coughs> it. So I did, you had the, all, all the logic there um, beforehand. Yeah, um, exactly. Add. Yep, yep. And yeah, and the logic was written in C. ARM is written in C. So, you know, certainly I couldn't just copy and paste, but in a lot of the data, like for the patterns, like I think uh, Nathan was pretty impressed on how fast things are going, but basically, you know, I was actually pretty happy that I was able to take, once we got the base engine going, just to go and take the uh, pattern data, copy it over, and then I looked at to see how I was making things move and copied that over one line at a time and make sure that it would work on the arm. Um, and then I just ran it and it worked the first time. I went, oh, that was, that's a freebie. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's like the next day I was able, hey, here's, Here's the guys flying in, and all the patterns work work perfectly. So uh, um, I don't think that's cheating since it's my own code, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I think there's almost an expectation as the life cycle of a system expands and goes on that games are going to push the limits further and further all the time. Like if you look at the first games released on the Atari 2600 to the very last games released on it in the, in the early 90s like it's leaps and bounds ahead and so it, it even with modern consoles you look at the earliest games versus the last games they they get better at programming they know the system better um e even like if you go into like the S nes and snes they put in extra ram on the cartridges you yep. put yep. extra chips on the cartridges so there's I don't really see any argument at all again unless they're going to argue against like the Super Nintendo and all the other systems that put extra helper chips uh like even Sega 32X like it was an add-on to the system that gave it more power like there's there's been there's so many examples throughout history of this happening already and nobody's going to say no no we stop here this is the limit of this system. We don't want better games. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I think being an artist, you're supposed to be at the frontier. You're supposed to be like in the weeds, hacking at with the machete. And the reality of that is that you're going to get all the bites, and you're going to get all the scratches, and you're going to get all the arrows thrown at you. But that's the cool thing, and that's what excites me about you know the idea of like a new champ game coming out. Is we know that you're going to keep pushing it and keep doing your thing, man. And awesome. the, awesome. the, the the fact that people are saying things about it actually means you're totally doing your job. You're totally, because you should be pushing the limits. And that's what's exciting about your work, man, compared to, to you know, and I, I really, if I'm just like, a, when a new champ game's coming out, I'm there and I'm excited to see where, how much farther you can push this thing. And I'm excited that you're inspired and please keep doing your thing. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I, th I think the only thing, I, I just hope that people can, not be so competitive i guess you know it's, i know we have these well actually that's your fault james with these atari awards you know so maybe i won't submit my games for consideration because i'm really i'm not out to like you know i, I want to see you know it's a shame to hear that you know there could be other great games being developed i mean one thing that i miss personally is being able to play good games like if i'm making them all the time you know i've said this before it's like took me 10 years to get to play ladybug again without you know without seeing the code just enjoy the game you know i took 10 years off and finally get to enjoy it you know and uh, the same thing with galaga and stuff like that it's like every time i'm playing i'm looking for bugs and like how did it you know blah 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 it's like uh so it's great when i see a game like aardvark or a chaotic grill or you know the dungeon game or you know amoeba jump you know just these games that i can play like wow these guys are awesome these games are fun this is my chance to actually enjoy it so you know, i'm just hoping that people see that you know it's uh their games are just as much appreciated as mine and uh you know and uh you know hopefully they they take inspiration from from what i'm saying and, and not competitiveness yeah another uh, an additional new good game coming out does not take away 
from a game that is already out or a, a new good game you know it there's it, there is no competition it's all additive it it uh, it just makes makes things better it doesn't detract from each other that's yep. that's how yep. i see it exactly there's room so. for all kinds of games yeah so okay. um okay. thank you so much for um being here and also thank you so much for donating um galaga uh the boxed copy to to the um to the auctions it's doing very very well as we can all expect because it is such an amazing amazing gift you've given us so thank you so much for everything you're welcome and yeah and thanks thanks to you james for having this uh, marathon i know um and of course thanks to the whole entire stella team so you know, Stella is does so much. It's not just for developers. It's you know for game players. It's for people to, you know. There's so many facets. You know, it's in like portable devices now. It's all over the place. You know, it really gives us the opportunity to uh, experience something that we love on, you know, so many levels. Um, and you know, it's, it's people are going to look back and say, you know, that was one of the the main reasons that you know we were able to even develop and make half of these games and you know all the enjoyment that we got from them so uh so this is a certainly a worthwhile cause i'm glad uh you know something i was able to donate something that uh that can hopefully bring some money into the people that uh, you know that are, that are working on this and and help with with their cause so thanks james yeah no, no problem thank you and um uh, thanks for joining us on this stream all right and, uh, all right so we'll, we'll talk to you soon okay guys thanks Bye-bye. Bye. There we go. It's a little, a little awkward clicking on and off. I need a hotkey. You yeah. can do that, but it'll take a little to set up. And figure it out. Yeah. That's the thing, you man. Could... It's always refinement. Like, every time you yeah. step, we step in front of here, we always figure something else. Something new. new. Oh, I can do that next you time. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this is 2000 ISO. <laughs> It is two thousand. That's what it's set to. I'm not even kidding. That's the oh, power wow. of that camera, dude. Yeah. Sorry, I'm nerding out. Nerding for a second, out, but it's a terrible lens, though. It's, it's terrible. terrible. Lens. Look at this foggy soap opera effect we've got going on. Sorry, everybody out there. We're using a different lens so we can get everybody in. Um, but we're going to move on to the next game. It was One awesome thing I that John to, Shampo to was say talking. about the the different categories in terms of yeah, competition. Yeah, I was going to get into that. Yeah, actually. you could just have. So let's let's brainstorm. Mm -hmm. um, during the next game of how to mitigate and promote games that you know maybe get lost in the shuffle um, so we're gonna go to draconian if you want to hold down the middle mm -hmm. button there right. and we're gonna oh, go yeah. we're gonna do a little challenge which is we're gonna get the highest score we can cool. on level one you can't go past level one uh, not allowed <laughs> Draconian, and no, I have to change that. Spice Because we're playing so many games today. I'm just going to have to change it on the fly. And this is done by Mr. Spice, Dara Spice Jr. Check, 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 test, test, we're good. Okay. So, to finish oh, the level, okay. to finish the level, you destroy all of the bases, all the green dots, but you don't want to destroy all of them. So, to right. maximize points, you probably want to destroy everything but one. Mm -hmm. and, and then survive as long as you can. And then survive as long as you can. But they're going to be sending out spy ships against you. Um, Oh, that's oh. a noisy button. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know is anybody it's... else upset about the noise of the button? Or is it I think just it has a... auto-fire. Try so holding it hold down it and see oh, what happens. Okay. I think it has auto-fire. Okay, now that I know it has auto-fire... <laughs> now you're going to dominate. I don't know if it does or not. I, don't, I think it does. Let's turn that down. Yeah, yeah. so do that. I get annoyed by both of <laughs> Oh, do you? Yeah, a little know. bit. Maybe. Sure. <laughs> um, so, yeah, right. thanks so much, John, uh, for um, oh for calling God, in. And we did an game. interview with John uh, last Portland Retro Gaming Expo that you can go check out, um, talking about all his games. So if you want to 
learn more in depth about uh, games that he's put out and um, Mappy especially. Um, so I plan, I'm planning on going to Portland Retro Gaming Expo again this year as well and doing a whole bunch more interviews with developers. Um, so that'll be lots of fun. Everybody was saying thanks. Thanks, uh, John, in the chat. That was really, really good. Aww. Dan ABC, good discussion. Uh, wish I could scroll back, but I can't. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, there we go. Thanks, John. Keata Grill. As a Canadian, I'm dying for a new hockey game for the 2600. I'm really looking forward to John Champo's... Um, what is it? What did he title it? Anyway. Oh, Champ Sports Hockey. Because he, he put out uh, some feelers there saying, Hey, what does everybody feel about a bunch of um, sports uh, sports games? The yeah. 2600, a lineup of sports games. We're like, hell yeah, hockey first. Let's do it. And um, 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 Scum Software put, uh, uh, there really should never be a, a vanilla or DPC plus argument. The arm can help, but it isn't the magic processor that makes the game no. better. It's all about the love, design, and development put into the games that make them great, not the clock speeds. And you it's can really well see that as well, because a lot of people program basic games that can utilize the DPC chip, because mm -hmm. um, there's some DPC routines, I think, that you can utilize. Uh, Oh, DPC. Yeah, DPC or um, CDF. I don't know if he implemented CDF in Batari Basic. But anyway, DPC Plus is definitely implemented. And it doesn't make the game better. You can do more things, but it doesn't make the actual gameplay better itself. So... You are not your tools. No. You're... You, you I mean, can, if you're designing and building a cabin... It's like you might have the greatest uh, equipment of all ever. time. That like does not mean that it's a, a better cabin. That does not mean whatever you're doing. Yeah, your your wood is going to be cut short, or it's too long, or the nails. Or you put one nail in a That's board right. and it's going to fall apart. And also, and just basic uh, design. Like excellent. why? What? What do you? Yeah. What do you value? Like what do you care about? I mean that's. And that's the thing is like human creative ingenuity i mean that is the thing that is the x factor in everything that we do that's and right it's your creativity your ability to kind of um imagine where you want to go with it because it's not i wouldn't say that it's easy to learn how a tool works but i would say it is easier to learn uh how to use a tool than to figure out what to do with it because what to yes. do with it is infinite and it is like that is the creative process and i think everybody doesn't matter oh. who you are encounters that really when like you go it. wait i know how these tools the work one, the now one. what am i going to do with them yeah exactly and that's the question is what do you want to do with all this amazing stuff and and you know infinite possibilities does not actually create better yeah. human uh <laughs> creations i think my, one of the examples I gave on, on the show was, um, who did Ocean's Eleven? Uh, Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh's new film is on an iPhone. He's filming it on an iPhone. Okay? That's, that's hilarious. That's an example of a basic, basic tool. I mean, it's got an okay lens, but it's fixed. You yeah. can't zoom. You can't change anything on it. It is what it is. But he's, he's a master at his craft, and he's able to take... A, a very basic tool, a very simple lens. He can't change out the lenses. He can't zoom. He can't go wide. It is wide. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he is able to use that tool to its furthest extent. And, of course, give him an amazing camera, and he's going to, or, or a, a celluloid film camera, and he's going to do great as well. Absolutely. But it's about the person and about the work that's put into it rather than the tools themselves. I mean, the tools can help push things further and let you do other things. But I think in terms of 2600 games, it doesn't make... You can't make a bad game good because you're using an ARM processor. No. You can't make a game... But you can make an amazing game without an ARM processor, too. There's tons of examples of that. Whoa! Uh, threading the needle there. Oh, no, I got another life. Uh, uh, or did what? I? I think this might be on Infinite Lives. Oh! There you go. Do I have to start over? Because we were on the other game playing and it... Cause what? We were, yeah, you sorry. guys suck. Well, you would have got infinite points eventually. <laughs> sorry. Guys. And that's no good. That's all right. I'll just do it again. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Da -da -da. Make sure everything's still good and on track. Yep. Oh, that 
see. And we have a, a donation from David. Don't have a last name here. And he says, Stella is great. Support it. Thank you so much, David, for your donation to Whoa. Uh, Stella. How are we That's doing on the, on the eBay auctions? I mean, any new updates? I'm sure. I think you're out of the room when I was reading them That's all. all right, then. You don't have to reread them. Yeah, we'll do it just before the next break. Sounds excellent. So that we're not repeating ourselves. Boo his boo. And let's see who's up next in the chat, because it's almost time again. I mean, I, I should have figured that... The chats are going to take a long time. That's all right. Because yeah. I don't think it's going to slow down in the evening anyway. It will. So, like, we're packing a lot in. So And it's good because we gotta we got to get a bunch of stuff off the start and then our after hours starts. That's right. We'll Zero dim the lights. Zero page after hours, man. And we can dim <gasps> some of the lights. Oh, yeah, definitely. Take, take, do some mood, mood lighting and... Oh, we'll, yep. we'll do some stuff. We'll some <laughs> oh, yes, okay. Daryl Spice Jr. is up next. Whoa. Um, and he's at 3 o'clock, so definitely do not leave. Um, Daryl is going to be, uh, talking with us. Yeah, play some Barry White, that's right, man. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Stellathon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Daryl Spice Jr. Um, he is from Spiceware. And... What it First of game all, it needs to be said, what an insanely cool name to be given. Spice. Not just Daryl Spice, but Daryl Spice Jr. Junior. It's I like know. you were born to do cool shit when yeah. you got a name like that. No! Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> god. Oh, that was so good. That was awesome. It's one in a million, <laughs> kid. <laughs> one in a million, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like blasting swamp rats back at home. Is that what it, they are? Swamp no. rats? Swamp rats. Swamp rats. Yeah. Yes. Swamp rats. That's right. Oh, I went to see Empire Strikes oh. Back in. Uh, the... Is it still on Infinite Lives? Or oh, just keep the... getting more? No, I think you're at zero lives left. At the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Oh, that would have been that awesome. It was really, really good. I think I talked about it on the show already. They did like a live uh, scoring of it, right? Live scoring. They were perfect. You forgot they were there because they're so perfect. Doing the music for it. Like, it's yeah, totally yeah. on key. And it destroyed that spy ship. That I know. Oh, he's got away. Oh, he almost got away. Because that's the guy that triggers the problems. Yeah, that's not a problem, though. That's how you get your points in uh, this particular true. version of the game. Correct. True. That's, so how <laughs> <laughs> that's when you just try to, like, not die, and eventually your bullets will kill people. Yeah. Oh, John Champo just said, thanks. We just kicked off Champ Sports Hockey yesterday with our initial development thread. Yes. Yes, I can't wait. Oh, my God, that's going to be Man. so good. I'm um, excited for anything that the Champ Games does. I'll, I'm, I'm, that's an exciting day. <laughs> it is an exciting it's day. Truly. Yeah. The, the programming that goes into those games. Oh, just that's <laughs> that almost. That was like the game is trying to cheat me. And there's <laughs> oh, 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 oh okay. one six three three zero. Oh. So Jeez. I will play next because I have to set up. The next talk. Darcy, crushing it. <laughs> that's pretty crushing it for me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's good yeah. shit, man. I don't... Yeah, it's good. I'm, I, some genres are you know, are like people's things. Like, um, James is very good at these kinds of things. Platformers and shooters. Yeah. What are your favorite kind of games, Darcy? Yeah. Right. Um, like genres, styles. Right now, my favorite game. It's not an Atari game. No, what? It's okay. Oh, it's, what? Uh, Borderlands uh, 2? Fis well, that's actually oh, okay. probably Your my favorite. Favorite? favorite? Yeah. But uh, uh, Fission Superstar X. Shit, what's that about? It's like a 16 bit game. It's on Steam. And 16 bit style. 16 bit style, yeah, yeah. It's. it's And you. Um, mm. You travel through the solar system, starting on planet X, yeah, uh, and then moving through Pluto and so on until you get to Earth. And at each planet, you stop and you show off the amazing planet-destroying bomb, Selene. And she puts on a show of sitting on a stage. And then uh, the first time you get to a planet, you're likely to press the explode the bomb button and yeah. block the planet <laughs> because <laughs> then you get a new you unlock a new ship. Uh, but the goal of the game is to get to Earth and not blow up Earth, but just, like, do a 
a wonderful show, which is again just a bomb sitting on a stage doing nothing. Um, but it's uh, it's super funny. That sounds and awesome. And it's really fun. And yeah, it's, it's really good. It's it's a resource management kind of thing. Yeah, what, it, it's, it's a, what it's killed a, me? It's oh, a roguelike. It's a roguelike. So you go, you have shops every once in a while. You have you know weapons or a crew or um, you can get outfits for the bomb. Celine can get uh, both a costume and boobs. <laughs> boobs are always added when you get a costume. Oh my god! And a power, and there's all this stuff. Anyways, it's pretty fun. Distracted. And uh, listening to your story. Yeah. Distracted by <laughs> boobs, James. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyways, it's pretty fun. I I finally made it to Earth and both oh, you destroyed did you? it, and oh, that also was uh, ended the game without destroying it a couple of times. So. Uh, also, you had like the the, very the good ending and yeah. bad ending. <laughs> yeah, and I've started playing with you know like the difficulty uh, modifiers turned on, so it's pretty fun. So your Borderlands Two is your favorite game of all time. It's 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 got to be one of my most played, if not my yeah. most played game. Most hours. I don't know. It. Like it depends on your. I mean. That's I don't actually you play that many full action first person shooters. In yeah. fact, first person shooters well, that's uh, really... I like story based ones. No, actually Borderlands two has a pretty cool story in it. Yeah, so. that's a, and it's a, it is somewhere between an RPG and a uh, uh, and an action game. Yeah. I would say it's almost more <laughs> RPG than than, than action because because like the weapons that you have have such an impact on the yeah, game. Yeah. Like and, and also the builds that you do. Like which characters did you play in Borderlands two? Um, who did, who did, who did I didn't play Zero or uh, the, the Assassin or the Gunzerker very much. Okay. I played all the other ones. Uh, mostly uh, Maya and uh, Krieg yeah, are the ones I've done Yeah, did you do, do um, any of the DLCs? All of them, yeah. Yeah, DLCs <laughs> uh, are Tiny Tina, Tiny Tina's uh, Salt and Dragon Mountain That's is fun. probably the best. Uh, Gavin says that it is the best game, even though it's just a DLC. Yeah. Like, in the history of games ever. It's so I, awesome. I, it's really good. I liked it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it that praise, <laughs> but, I, but I would by no means say it's a bad game. Like, it's such a fun thing. So the whole... I mean, I, I really enjoyed Borderlands 2. I played a lot. I played a lot of Borderlands 1 Ooh, and Borderlands 2. Yeah, yeah. I actually and, um, I like Borderlands 1 as well. And I like the um, uh, the final boss in Borderlands 1 the best. Like, the um, uh, secret boss, rather. The, I don't know if you ever fought that guy. Hmm. Probably not. He's like in one of the DLCs, and he's like almost impossible to beat. And I, you know, I beat the final boss, like the secret boss in Borderlands 2 as well. But like that one just took him. Which one is that? He's the one who appears, and he's like, I mean, you have to spawn him specifically. Oh, and, and is, it, is it? Is he a? Uh, he's like a giant, like got like four legs, and like one of the insect things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I verm Vermitus or whatever. Something, yeah, I got yeah. him as well. I killed him with Krieg. But it's hard. It took me oh, like yeah. it took me like four hours to even just figure out like what I could do about it. The first time I went in to get him, the because the way that you spawn him is by getting uh, by them upgrading. Yes. Right. And he, I immediately got him to upgrade the very first time I tried him. He showed up. I think it was uh, pretty awesome. Anyways, Daryl Spice Jr. warned me that uh, this would be too easy. <laughs> He's like. Mm. Maybe you shouldn't play the first level. Maybe you should play one of the later levels. Well, given that you can choose, well, for you, James, uh, to for pick sure, but for levels, us, definitely you? not. You can yeah. choose your, to start your skill at is levels. just so much higher in these um, well, these do, games. I do have the world record. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, like, I think that has a huge factor because for me, I think this would be. Like but people have beaten me. They just haven't seen it. But they can't you pick higher levels automatically you, without you playing can. through? So you yeah, can. that's an easy uh, solution. Yeah, an easy challenge. Although this but level I will have gives to give me up, a I chance think. to play without immediate shot. <laughs> That's true. true. Um, yeah, but what genres are your favorite? If you, Darcy, like, what would you say? I like roguelikes with the random um, replayability, where you know there are certain things set and certain things that yeah. are different every time. And I like those. Um, and like, I like RPGs, but. I'm weird. I like crave the the existence of a sandbox universe, and yet I don't really like having a game too sandboxy. <laughs> you like storyline. I like the, I like to be railroaded a little bit. Yeah, I mean, open, <laughs> open world is challenging. I like sure. open world, but I like there to be a an obvious a main storyline that yeah. is like the main storyline that you follow, and you can do the other things like maybe after, or 
you can stray, but that there's a, a solid uh, storyline that you uh, follow, and that it's obvious that that's the line you're supposed to follow. So what's going on in the chat? Uh, not too much. We got like, you know, a raid boss that he helped us out with, like, what the description is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, other than that, it's, I'd love to uh, see more Atari 2600 fighting games. There's it's been a good. couple lately. You mean like one on one fighting games? I think or he, I think he means street like those like brawl like kind street of. fighter kind of style. That's what I assume. A one on one street fighter. But he'd have to let us know. We did do Kung Fu, Kung Fu I, Combat. I don't think we've done one that's completed. No, they, they've been they, in work in progress. All been, and they've always had, they always have some sort of slightly clunky challenges with them because I think it's a difficult one to translate. It is, because um, there's a lot of graphics, a lot of animation, and a small, lot of quick movements. All about gameplay, too. It has to run smoothly oh, and perfectly. Those, yeah, because there's there's nothing else but that to it. Yeah. There's no levels. There's... And then it's hard because you, it's, they kind of have to be two-player games. Yeah, because, that's like, challenge because the AI it, is so... It took a not while for, for AIs to get cool in like, um, those styles of games. Yeah, like, I mean, not even a lot Mortal of Kombat, like, early on was pretty, still even, like, clunky, and that was regarded as a very good one. Like, I played Soul Calibur a lot, and that one was pretty decent, but it's very difficult. Like, those games are just more fun when you're playing against somebody. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why, like, yeah. I think most people who play those games now, like Mortal Kombat and stuff, they're always doing online and playing against real people. It's yeah. It's just way more fun. Because you can learn right down to the minutiae of how to beat the computer after a while. Well, yeah. You just know, understand their moves and how they work. Or the computer is just too overpowered because yeah, it's sometimes just insane. it's easier to, uh, once you know what you're doing, sometimes the humans are the, the difficult, or the easy ones. Sorry. With FPS, I find <laughs> yeah. that a lot too, where computer just is either so easy to impossible, it's very hard to find a nice balance. Because yeah. it's like, of course a computer can snipe you from nine miles away. Well, it's because, it's because in order for the computer to be fair, it has to follow a certain set of rules. Yes. Um, it, for it to feel like it's fair. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> but the humans, they... they well, they have the thing. same set of rules as you, and so you know it's fair. And the computer always knows where you are. Yeah. And like that's the thing, like, if you're wandering around in a map or something... It's hard to replicate the ignorance and yes. skill of the human. Where And, and, this, and the <laughs> reflex and the discovery of you, so it's like you can't... Yeah. It's very difficult oh, to sell. There's, a, there's something left in the space. That's I was right. wondering... I've always wondered in this game if things were, like, all... All the uh, asteroids and mines in the space are kept track of, and now yeah. I know they are. Yeah, that they cleared everything are. out. Yeah, I had that uh, thought too. Uh, what happens when you go off the edge? It wraps around. Are you gonna oh, get a new health? Oh, that scene? explains. Like that I'm knows. gonna stop at fifty thousand because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Do you have five health? Is that what those dots no, are? No, that the is the formation should, that is coming after. We should us. be trying to do like a high score. Like, what, I wonder if, I mean, with this method, if you could, like, get a world record, dude. Oh, you know what? That is true. You could. Because, like... That's a terrible way of doing it, though. Well, but, but, That's terrible. But even... I, I'd just be curious <laughs> how far you could like, push this, man. It's legit. Because you also died dumbly a couple times, too, so if you did a reset and, like, really went for it, I wonder how many you could get. Uh, I didn't, you know what? I don't want a world record that way. Yeah, you know what? That doesn't mean anything. If it can be done that way... Then, then that is a legit way oh, to do it, and I it should be, and it should be done that way. <laughs> it should be. That's absolutely it, it, it absolutely right. should be. If it's within the rules and you're not doing it, you're just, you're kind of just dicking around. Oh, I got fifty thousand. I'm going to just call this being base. a baller. <laughs> we had this discussion the other day about cheating. I think it was. On but no, but this isn't show. cheating. Oh yeah, I know. Well, was, what um, is cheating? The uh, definition cheating is, is cheating. The cheating is if there's a set of rules, and you break the set of rules. Right. And the set of rules has to be stated. If but, it isn't, then like, there is no cheating. Like in the manual? Did you so much more? A set of rules, it doesn't great. have to it's be a specific set. Yeah. It's whatever set that you are based... You are cheating based on the set of rules. So whatever the set of rules it is that you are oh, following... Should I try? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. Whatever I'm the set of rules <laughs> it is that you are following... Okay. That's the set of rules Your that rules. determines whether you're cheating. Your rules. Oh. Or whoever the, else's rules. Yes. You are cheating based on a set of rules. For the high score, the world record, yes. I wouldn't be cheating, so therefore it would be valid. And therefore, it should be done. Someone will do it. If it's the best way to do it, it is the way it should be done. And yes. if it's too That's easy and have a problem, then the rules to that world record should be changed. Yes. And then, you, have to you are right those to not do it that way because that's cheating. That's yeah. right. It's like Olympics or you know, but there's no way cycling. To, but there's no way 
there's no rational way to stop someone from doing this, and no. therefore, how could you there ban isn't. this? You, you'd have to put it in, and there are world records like no, no blah blah blah. Yeah, but how no would blah, you? Blah, blah. How, how would you, you find police this? that? But you're like, oh, I just couldn't destroy the last station. I couldn't find it. I. I mean, oh, you're only allowed can't... to kill eight. Yes, fighters that's, before that's you've cleared right. the map. You're not allowed to kill any fighters. You have to do there's gonna any be, fighters. There's going to be somebody. Only stations. A no-kill win. A no-kill win. Yes. That's right. And there, yeah. there are competitions like no-kill no wins. Passive oh, that's, runs. yeah, yeah that's, it's runs. cool. It's like an achievement, right? So how, we go far, one minute how far you can get to go. So we're going to be chatting with Mr. Daryl Spice Jr. It's 3 Whoa. p.m. almost, so I'm gonna get that oh, start set up. I never got to see how, how, how far I can go. No, what? You can keep going. Awesome. Yeah, you can. I'll just turn down the music. Hey! Fuck yeah! It's a different screen. Holy shit, though. So, good luck with that. Stuff's getting intense, <laughs> friends. I'm not. I'm not necessarily like great at these kinds of games either. So it's like we're just. Lately, I have the same technique for every game I play. Don't die. Oh, he's active now. Yep, yeah, he is ready. Daryl. I think there might, there could be some interesting footage from when I was playing and the look on my face. <laughs> there would was, be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was there. There was absolutely. <laughs> it's Twitch Dynamite is what that was. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute you for the audience soon. Um... So we're going to be talking right now with Daryl Spice Jr. As I said, his game's Draconian, which is amazing and definitely my top games ever. Oh, the um, insane! Because I played this in the arcade back in the '80s really? and I loved it. Oh my god, I loved it. Um, See, this is where you guys have this advantage, where like these have sort of meaning because yeah. these games are not meaningful to me in that way. Right? Um, they're, they're just meaningful games. now. Yeah, and they're fun now. They're fun, like cool. That's it's, it's but it's like I have I don't have that kind no of nostalgia. connection. And even without nostalgia, they're great games, right? Um, Frantic, uh, Medieval Mayhem, Space Rock, Stay Frosty, Stay Frosty 2, and Timmy. And he has donated Draconian, Medieval Mayhem, Space Rock, Space Rock's poster, Stay Frosty 2, Stella Stocking, all signed, all rare things. Uh, Medieval Mayhem is a rare clear uh, shell cart. The uh, Stay Frosty 2 is the limited edition cart number 51. The Stella's Stocking is limited edition, number 153. These are great eBay items that you can bid on right now, and they are hot ticket commodities because people are bidding like crazy on them, which is incredible. Amazing to see. That's why we're here. Uh, yes, exactly. And uh, he is the D for Daryl in CDF and CDFJ, um, along with Chris Walton and Fred Quimby. And um, so... And now J for John Champo in the CDFJ. Um, and he has an excellent blog on the Atari Age, on Atari Age, detailing his work on previous games, and also has an assembly programming tutorial if you want to learn about making Atari 2600 games. It's called Collect, so just search for that. And he is also working on a new 2600 programming language called Spice C. Do. Um, and he's also uh, going to be reworking Frantic and Frenzy after. He has finished Spicy, or in conjunction with it. Um, so we're going to talk with him right now. So oh it's, my God. Uh, it's yeah. getting intense up in here. Daryl Spice on <laughs> the call. Oh my God! Sorry. That's so jamming. Rip headphone users. Hello, Daryl Spice Jr. I see your face. Oh. Good, good. Um, so yeah, you're very clear. Much clearer than uh, the previous callers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, this is going to go like a, a CB style, like I explained before, because we have the speakers so we can all hear you, and then it feeds back into the microphone. Um, okay. Oh, and I see you have your Tesla hat on. Very excellent. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so okay, I think I've you too low. There we go. Okay, so welcome to the uh, stream. Welcome to the Stellathon. Thank you so much for. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks for having me. It's uh, been looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously you have uh, some involvement in Stella and you talk with um, the Stella developers and you, I'm sure you contribute code 
and because you are part oh of God. the um, consortium of CDF, um, yep. Yep. <laughs> you're the D, the Daryl, and the CDF, and the CDFJ. Mm -hmm. So you must uh, work fairly closely um, um, uh, developing Stella or, or working with Stella and updating the, the code and making sure that it uh, plays as closely to the real hardware as possible. Uh, yeah, not as much as I used to. Uh, back in 96, I actually ported Stella to run under OS2. Yeah, and I, I maintained the uh, OS2 version up until 2000. And, okay, because and probably after, OS2 after, is not uh, as popular as uh, it once was. Yeah, <laughs> and not long after that, I had switched over to using the Macs. And since somebody else already had uh, the Mac version, I didn't, you know, keep up with it. Mm -hmm. but, so probably but, you're more now in like um, passing on information about incompatibilities or or things that you see that have gone awry when you're developing your games. Yeah, um, you know, when, when we did like the the DPC plus, I, you know, I wrote the code for Stellar for that, and you know. Uh, I think Fred found the ARM uh, emulation that we use in Stella. You know, before that, when I was developing um, Stay Frosty 2, it was really hard um, because there was no way to debug it because you couldn't run it under Stella. And so yeah, I, that would yeah, be so very I, annoying. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So you'd have to be yeah. transferring it to the Harmony cart and seeing if it runs. Or... Yeah, exactly. And I actually would do things like have my phone record my monitor to see what things were doing so I could frame step through it to figure out bugs. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, that sounds yeah. incredibly, incredibly tedious. Yes, it, it was. So it was very, I was very happy once we were able to get the ARM emulation running under Stella. Stella. Oh yeah, I guess because you wouldn't be able to do any break codes, you wouldn't be able to analyze the um, the what's in RAM and what's happening. Uh, you just have to play the game and then it crashes and you're like, okay, well, why? Exactly, exactly. And it, um, you know, but, um, you know, and working on Stella is actually how I ended up doing my first homebrew because um, back when I was did it, there were a few homebrews done in the 90s and we included some of them with Stella when we distributed Stella. We had a great, you know, agreements with the people who wrote them. And then um, I think it was Christmas 2005, I was visiting my brother, and we hooked up the Atari, and we're playing at uh, Warlords with my nephews and their friends. And at first, they were very like, oh, that's ugly. Why would we want to play this? Five minutes later, you know, they're all really into it. Yeah, uh, Warlords is is definitely one of the best multiplayer games ever created for the Atari 2600. I played that to death back in the 80s and, and 90s because the the gameplay is just so so good and so tight and so much possibilities for alliances and and mm -hmm. so I can see why you were you were influenced to uh, to to take that on and and update the graphics and and gameplay and make it closer to the right right. Yeah, and that was, um, and you know, there's stuff in there that other people came up with. That was, that's a big part of what I like about the community is all the feedback and ideas, like uh, the knight that marches out at the end. You know, that that Dave came up with that. He did all the graphics for Medieval Mayhem. Excellent. Um, so let talk a little bit about um, Spice C. Now that is uh, obviously it's a C-based um, coding uh, framework, and is that going to be for the um, for the ARM processor? I'm guessing. Yes, yes. It's it's basically going to be set up like, but uh, Batari Basic, but instead of writing your code in Basic, you would write it in C. In C. So you're going to have a bunch of um, say built-in kernels, or people can make kernels for it, so that it's uh, just like Batari Basic. You kind of uh, put things in and, and here's the kernel already and you can divide your screen up into different Yes, that's correct. And it's it's taking a bit longer to get going than I was hoping. You know, life happens and, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. And so that's actually a big part of why I started the new uh, club at Atari Age for Harmony Melody development. 
And with that, what I'm going to try to do is set it up so that people who are a little better at doing the C stuff, they could just jump right in without having to wait for me to finish Spicy. Mm -hmm. So how is, um, how is the C developed right now uh, for ARM uh, games? Um, how do you compile it and, and how does that all work? Because I've, I've never really researched into that. I mean, it's a, because it's kind of, you're kind of making two separate programs now, right? You're, you're one, you're making the program that runs on the chip and you're making a program that runs on the Atari and there's, there's an interface, there's a talking back and forth between those two. Yes, that's correct. The um, you know, when, when you write these games, you have to write the, the code for the Atari because the ARM has no access at all to the internals of the Atari. And so over time, you know, we developed a way of going back and forth, communicating between the RAM. And so that's what I'm trying to bundle up to make it easier for other people to do. Okay. So very uh, a streamlined process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, so, that's yeah, really so, good. Yeah. When when I first started, it was you know a lot of trial and error, and we we discovered better ways to do things over time. You know, like I I wouldn't at all try to do stuff the way I did it for Stay Frosty too, because we've learned much better techniques since then. And are you going to be uh, reworking Frantic as you develop Spice C? Is that is that kind of the the test bed yes. for for yes. working yeah. with it? Because that yeah. that would make yeah yeah. Because I'll need to have something to try out, and because what I need to do is like my my uh, sprite routines that do all the multiplexing that draw everything using the two sprites. I'll need to be able to test it. And so once I make that, which is part of the Spice C, then I'll write the game logic that would be part of the Frantic. And so I'll, I'll be doing, you know, a little of this, a little of that at the same time. And I'll, at the same time, I'll also be um, doing Timmy, which will be using different kernel options, which will you know, need different um, sprite options and stuff. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm really looking forward to Timmy because back in you know back in the day when I had my Commodore 64, uh, Jumpman and Jumpman Jr. were like one of the heaviestly played games that I had on there. So it's that I'm really looking forward. Yeah, I'm I'm really disappointed that that deal with ThinkGeek just vanished. Yeah, they they had a remember it was a hostile takeover or something, and they you know the people that we were working with weren't there anymore and stuff and it was okay. just yeah you know, and now they've you know, was, now they've moved on and now they're shutting down their their e-store and now it's just going to be retail products so, right right yeah you know, right, it's right. i guess it has been a slow decline from from that point yeah yeah they were they were a bit pricey on their stuff i you know i've, I've bought stuff over time from them but they were they were quite proud of their products yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was extremely expensive to begin with when shipping to canada it was almost like yeah. Impossible. Yeah. It's pointless to buy it because the shipping was just as much. But then the shipping came down. But uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting products they had there. Quite a variety of very geeky products. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's too mm -hmm. bad that fell through because it looked like it was getting close to being done. And I guess they were financing uh, financing it. No, actually, we we never even got to that part of the discussions. Yeah, you know, they they approached us about starting the game, and so I you know I started figuring out how we were going to write it and stuff. So all, all of the code is ready for me to reuse, no no conflicts or anything. Or anything. Oh, that's good. So you don't have any contract sign or anything. Right, well, that's right, good. Right, it didn't get right. up to that point. So you just have to, I think you already changed the, the graphics from something that looked like ThinkGeek graphics already, didn't you? Uh, the only thing uh, I really changed was the logo at the bottom. It used to have a ThinkGeek logo with the little brain symbol on top, and now it just shows the Spiceware. Spiceware. Yeah, so that would have been the only conflict, really. Right, um, right, that you need right, to change. Right. So that's that's good. So I want to thank you so much for donating all the plethora of of games and the posters and um, very rare items too. Actually, like the the clear carts. That's that's amazing. Yeah, that 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 happened to be just a, a perfect timing situation. My parents had decided to downsize and moved into a smaller house and gave me back all the stuff I'd set them up with that, you know, my nephews and stuff would play whenever they were visiting grandma and grandpa. 
And I'm like, what am I going to do with these? I don't need extra copies. And then this happened. So I thought, well, this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to help with the community and stuff. And stuff. Yeah, really great timing. So I want to thank you so much for that. And, and they're doing really well in the uh, the auctions. And the auctions will be three days long, so they'll go right, right, even right, higher right. for sure. So those are those are. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, I have to say I love your lava lamp. Oh, um, oh in, in the uh, background. It's, um, not actually a lava actually lamp. A lava it's lamp. Um, um, like a little electrical, electrical lightning type thing. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see it. It doesn't come out that clear with us. Is this your office that you work from? Yeah, I actually work, yeah, out, of I actually work out of my house. I, I work for a I small company a small in the space company industry. In the space industry. The, uh, wow. the that I work on is uh, used to actually design spacecraft, like Messenger that went to Mercury was designed with our software. Nice. That's wow. unbelievable. That's amazing. Uh, I can understand uh, the Tesla hat makes even more sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I um, actually, I, I was in... Uh, Al uh, from Atari age, he gave me a ride in his Model S back, I think it was around 2015 or so. And at the time I was actually looking at what my next car was gonna be. I'd, I'd had a couple Honda S2000s and just didn't know what I wanted to get next. And I was debating like a Z4 and stuff. And then um, he was driving around the Texas Hill Country even taking sharper turns than I would have in my little sports car. And it just blew me away. And then he showed me on the screen how the uh, supercharging worked. And I realized that I could take road trips in it like to Wisconsin, which I'll be doing in a um, few weeks. I've got a wedding to go to. And, you know, I, and at that time I couldn't have made it down to my sister's in Corpus Christi. Uh, there wasn't enough range and there wasn't charging between there, but with my three, you know, both, you know, it's can go far enough and there's charging now. Yeah, both um, both Darcy and I have uh, electric vehicles as well. We bo both have the uh, the Volt. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so we're very, very happy with them because we like I, I live in Vancouver mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we can drive. I, we can drive anywhere right. and we, we haven't right. touched we don't go to the gas station anymore it does have an engine but we just don't use it oh, okay. so it, yeah. I mean okay. yeah. I mean once you've driven an electric car and I'm sure you can attest to this it just it feels like you're driving in the future it's it's done uh, um, gas gas consuming cars are over yeah yeah it, it definitely is a game changer right so, you know, I haven't been to a gas station other than to like get a soda or something in uh, what, 13, 14 months. School tires. Sorry? You I had to fill up my bicycle tires, so I oh, would okay. Yeah, I've, I've got an air pump in the garage, so yeah, I don't have to go out for that. Uh, uh, mine, mine's a little battery operated one. It actually looks like a cordless drill. Yeah, it works, works pretty good. Good. Yeah, so I, I wanted a, a Tesla, but it's just just a little bit too out of the price range, and and uh, it wasn't the price range; well, it was the what was availability, it? which was oh, I probably wouldn't it have wasn't, one. I'd that's probably true. be maybe getting one. Yeah, we now. bought we bought ours we bought ours just before I think Tesla's threes were available in Canada. Uh -huh. So it's like, uh -huh. well, my, and we weren't on the list. So, we weren't yeah. on the list, and yeah, yeah. and my car had been like, no, this is this it's broken breaking down. It's done. I'd yeah. had it for yeah. like. 15 years I w I'd driven as far as I could yeah so it's like yeah. now it's the time to look to yeah yeah my old uh, s2000 was an 05 and at the start of last year I think I spent 3,000 repairs on it and you know just things were starting to break left and right even like the AC knob you turn the knob and the knob shattered you know it was just like okay <laughs> So, yeah, the, the repair um, repair bills on my old car were way way more than financing a new car. Yeah, like yeah. way more. It's outrageous. It it just was too much, and it's, yeah, it was time. Yeah.
ache of these companies, though. I mean, things aren't made to last anymore because yeah. we're in this consumer sort of like rhythm of every three yeah. to sort of like you were six years, you're supposed to get a new appliance and but, anything. But right. the thing about cars right. is that when you buy a car, you are getting a spectacular package deal. <laughs> like you, re you really are. Like buying a full car is way cheaper than buying the parts. Oh, right. yeah, right, them right. putting it all together, they're all, it's all, it's, you know, the, yeah, the manufacturing computers. process is so efficient compared to any part that you have to replace. Yeah. It's, it's so much more expensive to replace a part. Like, and not in a scammy way, just like in a real way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. To be a car salesman, Darcy, that's amazing. That's right. <laughs> For um, the low price. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there anything? Uh, Lem Callister is asking something there. It's, um... Good job for us. Thank you so Quest much. Questions Spice. from the audience. Yeah, no, I just happened to, yeah, I've got that on the other monitor and, uh, yeah, there, there's not much space left at all in Stay Frosty 2. Yeah, mo oh. most of the games I'm getting down to bites free. <laughs> I think that's how it always works. You always fill whatever yep. void yep. is given to you with projects. It's right. like, oh, right. I have as, 10 as units. I think I will use 10 units. Yeah, as, as you free up space, you end up adding new features. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I should be asking for questions from the audience <laughs> beforehand. Yeah, but is there anything else that you wanted to add uh, about pro projects coming up or um, just, just things in general you want to talk about the Atari 2600 uh, scene? Are, are you going to be uh, going to Portland Retro Gaming Expo? Because I think the first time I ever went there is when I first met you, and yeah, uh, you don't, yeah. you won't remember me. But um, I got you to I got you to sign Medieval Mayhem. I think it. Uh, yeah, I bought it at the Atari Age booth. Yeah, that would have been uh, 2013, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that that was a lot of fun. I've been back once since. Uh, won't be this time because uh, of the wedding coming up. I'm I'm taking a couple weeks off to do a road trip to Wisconsin for that. Well, that'll be a terrific time, no matter what. Yeah. 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 So yeah. is this your yeah. first big road trip with your test? Uh, with, yeah, the furthest I'd gone so far was to, uh, Fort Benning in Georgia. And that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember exactly how long that took. We, we stopped overnight on the way. And then the next day it was just, uh, just a few more hours to get there. My, uh, nephew's now a tank driver in the army and we had gone for his graduation from basic training. Uh, oh wow Daryl you have a fascinating family I wish I could have like a <laughs> dinner party at your house and just hear about all these things <laughs> tank drivers and designing space yeah, uh, yeah. software is fascinating stuff and uh, dad was a helicopter pilot he uh, flew President Nixon back way back when when no way wow okay wow that's crazy um, so I, I'm guessing your next your next thing um, in terms of the Atari 2600 realm is is spice C that you'd be working on i guess yeah that, that's the the big thing that i'll be working on next and you know the games that i'm going to be finishing will be as part of finishing spicy mm -hmm. and, so uh, frantic and, and uh, frantic and timmy. right frantic and timmy and i'll probably do something um that uses the bitmaps where we get that 128 pixel bitmap screen mm. Okay, very yeah. cool. Oh, there's yeah. another question from the audience. Hey, Daryl, are you building your spicy framework around Fred's default DPC plus arm, redder, arm header core? I don't know what that means, but you might. Uh, it's, it's being built around the CDFJ, which is our the, the most recent uh, driver that we use with that. Uh, the main reason is DPC plus, when we, you know, when we first designed that, it was basically an expansion of the original DPC. We didn't even consider ARM support at the time. And that was just kind of tacked on and it's uh, it's a bit kludgy to, to use the ARM with the DPC plus. And once the, the ARM code runs, you end up having the 6507 do a lot of preparation before the kernel that takes scan lines worth of time. And when we developed the bus and the CDFJ, we made it so all of that stuff now happens in the ARM code rather than the 6507. 
Mm. And, so a lot of off, and, offloading onto the arm as much as possible, which makes right. And and the other benefits are the driver is smaller. Um, the DPC plus driver is three K in size, and the the CDF J is two K. So you end up with more space for your game, more RAM because the driver has to be copied into RAM uh, because of uh, for performance. It runs faster from the RAM than it does in the ROM. Yeah, I think it's um, ROM access takes four cycles and RAM takes one, if I'm not mistaken. That is a significant saving. Yeah, yeah. And um, let's see, we got, um, oh yeah, th oh, our yeah. G2K ROM limit is basically what, what the uh, Harmony was developed with. I think that's the, the amount of memory that was included in that ARM processor that was used. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and also, um, I don't know how much um, you've looked at the Uno cart, but there's there's an ARM on there as well, but it's, it's accessed differently. I don't know anything about that, but I don't know if you've ever taken a look at the Uno cart. It has I, some I advantages have, uh, and some um, Yeah, I, I've not looked at it yet. Um, I've, every once in a while, I, I look into the discussion about it, but... It, now, it, it's using a newer version of the ARM, so it runs faster. It has more ROM abilities. I think also a lot more RAM. And, you know, part of what I'm looking at is to get the games produced, we already have the Melody, which is basically the Harmony without the SD card slot. Yeah, exactly. Because after you make the game, you have to think about production right. and cost of right. production and having the Melody cards already ready to go and just slam right. the, the game right. into there. It's such a... An easy process, and I think it would have to, the uh, the the Uno cart would have to get up to that level where it's it's almost plug and play, uh, and uh, for a good price to to, because you'd have to rework everything for the new ARM processor, right? Yeah, yeah. The memory map itself is different, I believe. You know, like where where things end up in memory is you know totally different, and that's. Um, I think they've been able to, in emulation, get like DPC plus stuff running on that, where it like translates addresses and stuff. But I don't, I don't know if they've actually released it where you could just dump one of the Harmony games onto it and have it run okay. No, I don't think I've heard that yet. And and plus they would also have to work with Stella and get that working on in the emulator, so it'll be easier to develop on it as well because. Right now, the only way I've been able to showcase games that have been de developed for the Uno cart is to actually just play them on the Uno cart and and hope it works. And because I can't play it on the computer, so it is it's a bit it's a bit tricky right now because it's so new. So I think it needs a lot more maturity before um, mass use by developers are gonna. Have yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And yeah, you know, it, it'd be neat to see what we could do with it once all that work happens. But mm -hmm. but at the moment, you know, I'll, I'll stick with what you know what we can get games produced. And that's you know that's like the same reason that I've not really done anything else with the bus stopping. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, it's it's really cool technology, but not being able to get the games released is a major disincentive to continuing stuff. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for for coming on the uh, Stellathon, and thank you, of course, for all the massive donations of all the games um, for raising funds for Stella for you know con continued development and for everybody out there playing these games on their computer. And of course, Stella goes into a whole bunch of hardware as well, like the the Retron seventy seven, so people can hook it up to their TVs and play it on. HDMI rather than going through what I have, right, which is right. like uh, RGB output to a, a $500 upscaler, and that's that's crazy. Like it's it's much easier just to buy one of these off the shelf. And the community has been able to make this a viable product now. So, yeah, thank you, thank you for everything. Yeah, and, and thank you. You know, the um, you know, with your channel, that's definitely quite helpful. Gets a lot more people interested in it. Yeah, you know, it's you know, I, I know I like to watch. I don't always get to watch because you're streaming during the day when I'm working. Yeah. You know.
But most, yeah, most but of us here don't have re regular jobs. We have very strange jobs, all of us. Oh yeah, we're, <laughs> so we're we get really to weird people. We get to play like uh, you know, he's a writer, and we're filmmakers, and and uh, well, so we're always working and never working. Yeah, yeah. That's, exactly. that's 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 how our life. So thank you so much for coming on on the stream, and um, yeah. yeah, we yeah. will talk to you later. Have a good one. Have a good one. <laughs> bye bye. You know, I gotta say, this Oops. monitor. Yeah. It's the best view, for for it, him. For for, for the for the hangouts picture. Yes. Because, it's not over uh, resolutioned compared <laughs> to the signal. Like on there, right. he, the colors were great. Oh, I see. Because screen. you know he's at say 480p or, or 720p. Yeah. And this kind of downscales it, and it, it erases the low resolution yeah right? it, it, when you have it on the high resolution screen oh, you see the flaws they're seeing us in terrible terrible view there we go. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> but it's a, it is like you when i was looking at this or once in a while i look at this and i compare the two and this was a more pleasant it was like the perfect screen well, that, for it that's that's why a lot of people that play retro games play it on crts mm. because you know, when it's big, it kind of looks not how it's supposed to. Like, this looks awesome and it's crisp. Yeah. Because I've got upscalers. And it's and, a digital and, signal. And it's, I it's guess it's pure, more pure. pure, too, right? Because it's like it is well, it's, an analog it's, sig it signal. Analog to it digital. It is easier to make this Sorry, I meant the, the, the Commodore, right? Uh, yeah. yeah Being this more is pure analog. because it is, it's analog to analog. Yeah. It is uh, mm. easier to make something like this work because it's... It's pixel by pixel. This is for yeah. sure Whereas the best video for the is like a smoosh. Oh yeah, the there's smoosh. no doubt. It's a smoosh picture, and then um, you stretch it out, and so you see the flaws. Whereas yeah. this can be mapped out quite satisfyingly. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it is pixel, 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 and you just yeah. make these pixels bigger. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna switch games. Good. What I've learned is that <laughs> no one can beat James at, uh, at this kind well, of game. This dude. game. Holy got... shit! So we're gonna play Night Guy in Low Res World. Oh, that's we're gonna a... try to get Fuck. to the end. Th this means James is going to play no, the well, whole time. <laughs> to begin with. No, man, pretty much. We should just have you, you marathon it because there's no way well, me and Darcy can be able to do it. I have to do a lot of tech here. So. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to switch over. Okay. I don't even Pull know down the middle button. Got it. And the. Uh, oh, it's so oh, hot. hot. The mini picture, the cartridge picture. Oh, yeah, we'll switch that. So, how's everybody doing out there? Enjoying the stream so far. We've got all these great guests, great interviews from the community. Ooh. Big heavy hitters. Um, oh, and I changed the picture here so it is the right one. And this is a game that is still in development, but it's getting close. Wait, I can't see it. I can't see oh, it Oh, I approve of the knight helmet. The knight's helmet. That's excellent. It is a very good helmet. Yeah. And Ugh. you can see in the little uh, cartridge art. He has got that little slot. Like, it is exactly that slot. It's down the middle yeah. and across. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's, yeah. oh, it's, the, sort the, of, it's the sort of... Uh, you lose. <laughs> Did you die already? Yeah, because I already I screwed up. Like, oh. like, and I was like, I may as well just die. That's a very good skull. Too. This sucks, though, because it's one oh, of Oh, the, yeah. Come on, dude. Please, <laughs> developers, Modernize. always... Yes, thank you so much, Daryl, oh. for um, doing everything that you do yes. and for being on. What happened? Oh, I just like. <laughs> you almost <laughs> you tried, tried to, commit, to die. You tried to commit suicide and landed on the platform. I find. I just like. So the next uh, next call in at 4 o'clock is going to be Dan Kitchen. Did you. Oh. The video, you wanted to de sync. Like, yeah, you wanted to re record because it's, it's been, been three hours. Past that three hours. Oh, three thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to. Go to our little thing here for a second. You don't need to like disconnect the stream to do it. No. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, that's no. good because that would be. An I'm error. just going to make a little transition here, uh, which will go away from us.